Texas. To the Sunshine State. The pageantry is unrivaled. The nation comes alive for Bowl Week. We welcome you to San Jose, the high-tech mecca of Northern California's Silicon Valley. And this is Spartan Stadium, which has been a home away from home for Fresno State. A regular stop on the WAC schedule. The Bulldogs are very comfortable here. Meanwhile, Georgia Tech is playing in its 31st bowl game, but only its second in the state of California. The sixth straight appearance for the Jackets. Capital One Bowl Week continues today. It's the Fresno State Bulldogs and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They meet for the first time ever in football. The kickoff is coming up next. Stay with us. Bowl Week, where history is made and legends live on. The tight end loses it. Top freshman quarterback in America leads Fresno State's high-powered passing attack. Georgia Tech counters with quarterback A.J. Suggs, a strong-arm junior who led the Jackets to upset wins over Virginia and NC State. Silicon Valley Football Classic. Today, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets from the ACC. They will take on the Fresno State Bulldogs out of the Western Athletic Conference. Hi again, everybody, and welcome. Chris Marlowe and John Cooper, the big story here in San Jose this week, the missing seven Fresno State Bulldogs, academically ineligible to play. We're going to have more on that in a minute. Let's talk about the Bulldogs. They played well at the end of the season, and this is a team that has a high-octane offense. Chris, they've got a quarterback, Paul Penninger, that's thrown 20 touchdown passes. They've got a running back, Rodney Davis, that's gained 1,400 yards, so their offense will be okay. Meanwhile, Georgia Tech, uh, they've had massive injuries this year. Their three top tailbacks are out, so that puts a lot of pressure on their quarterback, A.J. Suggs. Well, Suggs is going to have to throw the football because no way Dan Brown, the defensive coordinator for Fresno State, is going to let Georgia Tech run the ball. All right, the seven Fresno State football players unable to play today. What happened to them? Where are they going? Let's get out of the field and check in with Tracy Wolfson. Well, it's been a tough few days for Fresno State. Late last week, they found out that seven players will not be ever able to be in this game because they violated a new whack academic rule. It's a big loss for the Bulldogs. Out of these seven players, five of them are starters. That includes all whack defensive end Nick Burley and their top offensive threat, wide receiver Markey Davis. We spoke with head coach Pat Hill and asked him how he kept his guys from being distracted. He said he spoke to them and told them, treat it like an injury situation. It happened. Accept it. Now pick up the flag and move on. John, Chris, we'll just have to wait and see if his players can do that. All right. A year of adversity for both these coaches. Is Pat Hill in his sixth season. He took over for the legend Jim Sweeney, who built the program. And, of course, on the other side of the football is Chan Gailey. Georgia Tech won the toss and deferred, so Fresno State will receive and set to kick off one of the top kickers in the country, Luke Manje. Deep to receive for Fresno State is Adam Jennings. We are underway. Jennings five yards deep. He'll take a knee. That's a touchback. And the ball out to the 20. The quarterback, we've been talking about him a lot, a, a lot. Six foot five inch, 220 pound redshirt freshman Paul Penninger. Last year, he watched this game from the press box and helped out the offensive coordinator. He started the year as a backup and has come on and emerged as one of the great quarterbacks in the country. The backs and receivers, Rodney Davis is the featured back, over 1,400 yards. His brother, Marquet, out today, so the featured wide receiver would be number 87, the Andre Gilbert. First down from the 20 for the Bulldogs. 
And Fresno State will open with a pass play. Pinnaker throwing deep and overshooting his man, Jermaine Jamison. The Fresno State offensive line is huge. One of the largest in America, averaging nearly 320 pounds. Victor Tefani is in at left guard. Dardagon Shaq, Joe Shy anchor the right side. Very, very good. The Georgia Tech defensive line, very young. Two freshmen and two sophomores. Tony Hargrove on the left side is a bulked up former quarterback. There's a second down coming up for Fresno State, an offense that averaged just about 27 points a game, and markers are down. They got the left guard in motion, Chris. It's going to be a five-yard penalty on Fresno State. Prior to the snap, false start offense. Five yards, second down. So the linebackers uh, for Georgia Tech, the strength of the team, one of the great groups in the country, Wimbush, Kieran Fox, and Smith. And, uh, of course, the Georgia Tech secondary is good. Marvies Hester is the cover corner. Jeremy Myers needs five stops to become Georgia Tech's all-time leading tackler. Pinnegar on second down pass incomplete. Pass intended for DeAndre Gilbert, and he was hit hard. But Paul Pinnegar, the first freshman quarterback to lead the dogs since Trent Dilfer back in 1991. He's put up some good numbers. An outstanding touchdown to interception ratio of two to one. And Pat Hill likes his young freshman quarterback. So a third and 15 coming up now for the dogs. Vinegar in the shotgun with Rodney Davis. Georgia Tech likes the blitz, and here they come. Vinegar steps up, he's got a little bit of room, throws on the run, incomplete. Once again, pressured by Tony Hargrove. Adam Jennings was the man out there, and Fresno State will kick it away. Good defensive series for Georgia Tech. Chris, you're going to see Georgia Tech come with pressure, particularly in passing situations. John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, loves to bring those outside linebackers and put pressure on the quarterback. Jason Simpson, one of the top punters in the WAC, will kick it away. And Jonathan Smith is deep. The punt return specialist, Kelly Rhino, injured in the Georgia game, will not play today. Still nursing the bad knee. Rushes on and getting it away. It might have been blocked off the side of Simpson's foot and rolling dead out by the 42-yard line. 27-yard punt, no return. A.J. Suggs, he started his career at Tennessee. Played there two years and came back to Georgia Tech. He's had an up-and-down year, but when he's good, he's very good. Michael Sampson will run the ball today, but we'll see a lot of P.J. Daniels and Ace Azemafi. Kerry Watkins on the outside is an outstanding wide receiver. So Michael Sampson, a freshman running back, will open as the tailback. Fresno State shows blitz, and they hand the ball to Sampson. And Sampson, short game, maybe two. The offensive line for Georgia Tech will be a key. Nat Dorsey and Leon Robinson anchor the left side. Expect the Jackets to run left a lot. And the defensive line for Fresno State banged up. Claude Sanders, Faiz Satelli, Stewart, and Garrett McIntyre making his first start, replacing Nick Burley. Chan Gailey in his first year as Jonathan Smith now in the backfield for Georgia Tech. Suggs. Looking to set up the screen, and it's intercepted. It's picked off by Jason Stewart. And Fresno State has the turnover. Fresno State, one of the top teams in the last five years in turnover margin, Coach. And Chris, that's one problem that Georgia Tech's had with their passing game this year. That is the 14th interception that Suggs has thrown. He's only thrown 11 touchdown passes, and that's a big play in the ballgame. As you see the replay, you're going to see pretty good pressure. This is going to be a middle, what we call a middle screen. The ball is deflected and intercepted by the big defensive lineman. Jason Stewart, a 6'1 senior out of Bakersfield, California. So the Bulldogs will work the draw. Georgia Tech spinning out of a tackle is Rodney Davis to the 45. And Davis with a big first down run. Rodney Davis. 
Tackle by Marvius Hester. Davis runs for 16 yards. Rodney Davis, five, he, he, although he's only 5'8", he's 210 pounds, got a low center of gravity, Chris, and he is tough to bring down. Actually, he should have been stopped in the backfield. Georgia Tech came with a strong safety blitz. He should have been tackled for no gain. He needed 45 yards to pass Ron Rivers and become Fresno State's all-time single-season rusher. Got 16 of that right there. Once again, they hand the ball to Davis. He slips on the turf. It has been raining the last five days off and on here in San Jose, California. The turf is slick. It's really bad down by the 20-yard line. Kieran Fox coming up to make the tackle. So who will be the best mutter today? There's part of the field. No gain on that last play for Rodney Davis. So Davis, who started as the second string running back as he came over from Fresno City College, had to learn the protection schemes. A second down and 10 for Fresno State. Good field position. Pinniger, quick pop right side. Pass complete to DeAndre Gilbert. And Gilbert gets a short gain. Gilbert, a junior from Fresno, California. A good safe pass. Pinniger throws the ball out in the flat. You're going to see some good blocking by the wide receivers get downfield. We see a replay. Watch, the, watch the, the wide receivers get down the field and throw blocks. Gives the, wide, gives the uh, ball carrier a chance to gain some valuable yardage. Third and short coming up. Seven-yard gain for DeAndre Gilbert. Once again, he's replacing Mark K. Davis, one of the seven Fresno State players not eligible to play in this game. So third and three for Fresno State. Davis running right. He's got the first down. Davis to the 20 and inside the 10 all the way down to the five. Finally brought down by Jeremy Myers. So Rodney Davis running hard. Davis gets 20. Jeremy Myers stops the play here, makes a play. Rodney Davis again, low center of gravity, gets the ball outside. And he's got a lot more speed, Chris, than what people believe. If Myers knocks him out of bounds, otherwise he's going to score a touchdown. Emerged as a starter in game two, and Davis remains in the backfield. No score, 12-24 to play first quarter. Glad you're with us here for the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Once again, hand the ball to Davis. And when we talked to John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech last night, he said our number one priority coach, our number one goal was to stop Rodney Davis. So far, they haven't been able to do it. No question about it. That's the number one goal of John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, and also the, the number one goal for Dan Brown, the defensive coordinator for Fresno State. Both coordinators want to stop the running game, force the quarterback to have to throw the football. Davis. A junior from Dos Palos, California, running well here in the first quarter. Pinniger, and the short pass is complete to Duncan Reed. Let's check in with Reese Davis. All right, guys, we're in the studio. Keep you up to date on all the games going on on this New Year's Eve 2002 as we get ready to ring in 2003. The Axe of Liberty Bowl going on over on ESPN right now. Colorado State and TCU underway, as are Washington and Purdue down in the Sun Bowl. Washington with a 17 0 lead. Kyle Wharton to John Stanford. It's a 17 7 game now. They're close to halftime. Colorado State, a team that Fresno State beat during the regular season. Bryson Sumlin, number 34, is now into the backfield for Fresno State on third and four. Pinnaker buying some time, fires a bullet incomplete. Pass intended for Jermaine Jamison, and it was broken up. Jonathan Cox. John Tenuta is going to bring pressure. He's going to bring pressure in those passing situations, and the quarterback took a good shot right there after just as he released the ball. So a fourth down situation for Fresno State. And on comes Asen Asparuhov, a Bulgarian kicker by descent. He'll try a 22-yarder. This is well within his range. The holder is Jason Simpson. Asparuhov, no problem. It's good. So Fresno State and Pat Hill, they strike first. 11 minutes to go, first quarter. Bulldogs up 3-0. Spartan Stadium, home of the Western Athletic Conference, San Jose State Spartans. The first meeting ever between Fresno State and Georgia Tech in football. Fresno State getting a 22-yard uh, field goal from their kicker, Asen Asparuhov, set up by the interception from Jason Stewart. So uh, Fresno State coach looking very good on offense to start off. It's not going to take Rodney Davis long to break the record the way he started off here. He's had two outstanding runs. 
so far in the ball game. Three to nothing our score. Asparov kicking deep. Watkins is there. Watkins is a burner, and he's got it at the seven. Cuts out to the outside. He's driven out of bounds near the 25. Don't forget, tonight, Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN and ESPN2 at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. The Tennessee Volunteers take on the Maryland Terrapins, 35th Annual Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl at the Georgia Dome. Then on ESPN2 at 10.30 Eastern, the Air Force Falcons meet the Virginia Tech Hokies. That'll be a great game in the inaugural Diamond Walnuts San Francisco Bowl. Chris, I think we'll see Georgia Tech try to establish a running game here now. They've got a big freshman at fullback. So I think you'll see them try to trying to take the ball and move it on the ground. On first down, here's Jonathan Smith. And Jonas, Jonathan Smith making good yardage. He gets about five or six tackled by Cameron Worrell, a gain of eight. So Jonathan Smith, who will line up as a wide receiver and a running back coach. Yeah, he's, uh, he's nicknamed Freddie Smith. He's only 5'10", 189 pounds. But you're right, he's probably the most versatile player on that football team. He'll play a lot of different positions for the, for the Yellow Jackets. He's a former high school quarterback, so he can throw two. Second down and short for the Jackets. And a nice gain outside. It's Asa Zemafi. And Zemafi crosses midfield out of bounds near the 44. A little misdirection play here. You're going to see the guard pull out and lead the play. Zemafi, as you mentioned, got the ball outside. Boy, he looks like a good freshman running back to me. 24. Hadn't, hadn't carried the ball that many times this year, but that was a very good run right there early in the ball game. He got a start against North Carolina and responded with 136 yards and a touchdown earlier in the year on the scout team, but with all the injuries, uh, he has emerged as a player who gets some time. Michael Sampson back as the running back to hand the ball to Sampson, and he's tackled immediately. Let's check in again with Reese Davis. At the Axe of Liberty Bowl, guys, Colorado State and TCU, the Rams trying a field goal. Oh, but you've had some extra practice time. You can pull one out of the trick. Bang, Joey Kapari's pass. Did not hit Brandon Alcinell and the Horn Frogs denied them. We remain scoreless. Three to nothing here in San Jose. Fresno State with the lead. Georgia Tech lost three on that last play. Now Suggs will pass. His last pass picked off. He's on the money to Kerry Watkins. So the pass complete to Kerry Watkins covering and making the tackle was D. Mesa. Yeah, a good safe route here as we Georgia Tech quarterback drops back in the pocket, sucks, and throws the ball. It's only about an eight-yard pass. Only picked up the yardage they lost on the previous down. Now we've got third and nine coming up. Crowd comes alive. It's a predominantly uh, Fresno State crowd. Uh, Fresno uh, three hours drive south of here. Sampson stays in as the running back and Suggs with a deep drop. Steps up, throws, and the pass was dropped. A couple of Fresno State players had a chance at it, but it looked like it eventually got to Jonathan Smith, and he could not hang on. Suggs held the ball too long. He's got to get rid of the ball quicker if he has a chance to complete the, the outcut. And uh, Fresno State came with a three-man three man rush, drop three, three, uh, drop, rush three and drop eight, playing three-man zone in the secondary. But that ball should have been caught. Tremendous uh, coverage by Raymond Washington, who was making the start for DeMorio Renault, one of the seven that cannot play today. So Dan Dyke will kick. Dyke is the pooch kicker, and he's going to try to drop it inside the five. Good looking. But it's taken by Jennings. And a clip in the back. This one's coming back no matter what Jennings does. Jennings makes his way out to the 13. Chris, that was an obvious clip in the back. You can see that from the press box. Normally, you don't catch the ball inside the 10-yard line like that, but I think in this in this particular case, that was a good use. The, the receiver the returner used good judgment. It's a Sunbelt uh, Conference officiating crew. Our referee is Jim Jackson. And the penalty will be marked off against Fresno State. When we come back, the Bulldogs will have it first and 10. 8-17 to play first quarter. And Fresno State leads it 3-zip. Georgia Tech in its sixth straight bowl game. Fresno State in its fourth consecutive bowl game. 
first quarter, the only scoring a 22-yard field goal by Fresno State's Asen Asparuhoff. The running star so far has been Rodney Davis. He's tackled by Kieran Fox. So Davis with a six-yard gain. He looks good, Coach. He looks real good. And uh, that big offensive line you talked about is really coming off the ball. And Georgia Tech, even, you know, their emphasis is on stopping the running game. They're going to have to put eight or nine people up there if they're going to stop Rodney Davis. Rodney Davis needed 45 to become the single-season all-time rushing leader for Fresno State. He's got 41. Bowl stats uh, for the first year counting. And so Davis sure to pick that up. A quick hitch to Jermaine Jamison. And Jamerson keeps his feet driving to the 19-yard line. That's the quagmire area of the field down by the 20-yard line. It is a mess, a gain of eight. That's a great job of Paul Penninger, the quarterback. He had a, the, the ability to change the play at the line of scrimmage from a, from a run to a pass. And you, when you have the defensive back playing that far off the wide receiver, you'll see him do that often this afternoon. Now Jamison goes out. He's replaced by Adam Jennings. So the play's being shuffled in from offensive coordinator Frank Signetti. <laughs> Once again, the handoff to Rodney Davis. And the tackle made by number 56, Eric Henderson. Once again, it's a very young defensive line. Can you ever remember two freshmen and two sophomores on the D-line, Coach? That's think, awfully young. I think that's one reason they're getting pushed around right now. And, and again, I keep emphasizing we're going to have to get that strong safety. We're going to have to get eight people almost on the line of scrimmage to slow down this Fresno State running attack. Because the offensive line right now is just dominating Tech's defensive front. Logan Mankins, Victor Tefani, Rodney Michael, Dardagon Shack, and Joe Shy, the front five for Fresno State. On second and eight, Pinnegar. Drops it off to Davis. And Davis moves it up to the 24-yard line. Brought down by Marvius Hester. Hester, a good one. A senior from Atlanta, Georgia, two-year starter. He's their top cover guy. He's their best cover corner. They're going to rotate him and cover the best wide receiver for Fresno State. He plays what we call the field position. They'll put him to the wide side of the field. Do you like that idea, having the cover take the best receiver, or do you like uh, cornerbacks to stay on their side? No, I like to I like to plot my cornerbacks, put match, match up, put my best defensive back on your best wide receiver. 3 nothing Fresno State. The Bulldogs looking at a third and five. Pinnegar operating out of the shotgun. Georgia Tech, four-man rush. Pinnegar with time. Guns it over the middle, incomplete. Let's see if there's a marker on that. Yes, marker coming in. The pass intended for Duncan Reed. He's the former basketball player from Glendora, California, 6'6", 220. And that should be pass interference. And I think that's a good call. It looks like the de defender got to the wide receiver, made contact while the ball was in the air. A little bit surprised there. Uh, Tech only came with a four-man rush. Normally, you'll see them blitzing in that situation. Defense, the ball's placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Well, the D cord for Georgia Tech, he said he's going to blitz a lot more than I am. Yeah, I was we're seeing. I was surprised he didn't blitz on that particular play. You're going to see is that's a, that's a good call by the official. That's clearly in, clearly defensive pass interference. So automatic first down for Fresno State. Vinegar, the delay to Davis. And Davis keeps his legs going. He's going to be very close to the record. As he gets about five, Kieran Fox, the best defensive player we've had this year, says defensive coordinator John Tenuta. So let's check Rodney Davis. And with that last rush, Rodney Davis has become Fresno State's new single-season rushing leader. He just passed Ron Rivers. So Rodney Davis, 1,434 career yards, new Fresno State record. It's a nice company for Davis. Now Pinnegar will pass on second and seven, and the pass complete to Steven Spock. Spock, a sophomore from Clovis, California, mainly used as a blocking back. What do you like about Pinnegar, Coach, as a quarterback? I, I like a lot of things about Pinnegar. The first thing I like is his poise. He's doing a great job running the offense, and that's the number one thing that, and talking to Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator for Fresno State, that's the number one thing he looks for, run the offense, and secondly, is to get us in the right pass protection. They're really concerned about the pressure the Tech's going to bring, so their quarterback's got to get them in the right pass protection. Yeah, I thought that was interesting last night. He said the number one one thing he's got to get us in the right pass protections anticipating the blitz vinegar davis on third and one i don't know if he's going to get there i don't believe he made it that's a good job by tech's defensive line their linebackers in particular i think uh, did a nice job filling the gaps fred wright coming up 
from his defensive end position. No gain. So a fourth and one, and the punt team comes on. So the Georgia Tech defense, which was pretty good during the year, allowing just 20 points per game. And Fresno State will have to kick it away. Jason Simpson on. And he will kick to John Smith. Bright sunny day, temperature in the 50s. California cool, if you like. And it's a fake. They hike it to the up back, and that should be enough for the first down. So Fresno State, a little razzle-dazzle. And Pat Hill gambling. I think Pat Hill right now has told us that, hey, he's going to do everything he can to try to win this football game. The snap went directly to number three, Nathan Ray. I don't think he really caught uh, Georgia Tech off guard. They just didn't do a good job of tackling him. They got driven off the line of scrimmage. It looked like they were expecting the, the, uh, the, fake, uh, the fake punt. Nate Ray. Defensive back, a strong safety, a sophomore from Colfax, California. So Pat Hill, who says he'll play anybody, anytime, anywhere. Now you got to take advantage of it. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go deep here pretty quick. Davis. And Davis pounds off the right side for six. So Rodney Davis, the workhorse so far, tackled by Jeremy Myers. Rodney Davis running behind the right side of that offensive line. He's doing a great job. Their best offensive lineman is number 50, Shaq, the 6'2", 309-pound freshman, and Joe Shy, the right tackle, all-conference, 6'6", 330-pounder. So you got two big guys out on the right side of the Fresno offensive line. They just dipped under the four-minute mark, three to nothing. Fresno State leading Georgia Tech here in the first quarter. Vinegar once again a steady dose of Rodney Davis, and this time the Jackets are not fooled. Coming up quickly was Kieran Fox once again, aided by Aether Brown. That's a textbook tackle right there by Fox. He had 76 tackles on the year. You saw him get it, get under, get the pad level down underneath the ball carrier and wrap him up, stop him for no game. Loss of one there is John Tanuna. We misidentified him a little bit earlier, but there he is, and he is a, a, a blitz meister, if you like, coach. Very, very good football coach. John Tanuna, coach for me at Ohio State, did a great job. Coached a lot of those great secondary players we have for the Buckeyes. Third and four. The Bulldogs at their 49. Vinegar, shotgun, blitz. Vinegar dropped the football, and the Jackets may have it. Georgia Tech may have it. It may be Fred Wright or Fox. The numbers, the players are dirty. It was indeed Kieran Fox. So the blitz pays off for Georgia Tech. Exactly what we've talked about. You're going to see John Tanuta bring pressure. He's bringing the outside linebacker on a blitz. He, he uh, almost missed a tackle, but in doing so, knocked the ball out of the quarterback's hands, out of Penninger's hands. This gives Tech great field position. So now Georgia Tech at the 35-yard line of Fresno State. Sampson and Smith in the backfield. Now Smith in motion, far side. Suggs looking deep. A man open is Bilbo, and it's a score. No, check that. It's Kerry Watkins. A 35-yard touchdown pass from A.J. Suggs to Kerry Watkins. I'll tell you, Suggs put that one right on the money. Did a great job staying in the pocket, delivered the ball in good timing, and put the ball right on the money. Big play by Kerry Watkins. So Suggs throws his 12th touchdown pass of the year. And Luke Monjay on for the extra point. It's noteworthy because Monjay has never missed an extra point in his career. He's made 157 straight. Make it 158 for Monjay. One more time, A.J. Suggs to Kerry Watkins. 7-3, Jackets. A couple of turnovers, one by each team, have led to both scores. Georgia Tech scoring moments ago, and the Jackets lead it 7-3. Chris Marlowe, John Cooper, and Tracy Wolfson with you. The Georgia Tech scoring drive, and that's how you like them, Coach, a quick scoring drive. A quick scoring drive. They got the matchup they wanted. That, that, that ball should not have been completed because uh, Fresno State was playing three deep zone. The cornerback, Dee Mesa, just didn't get back in his zone, didn't play the ball very well. So Georgia Tech's Monjay 
with the deep kick. Jennings at the one. Adam Jennings sprints to the outside. Jennings at the 30 and a good return out to the 34-yard line. We're going to step aside for a moment. We'll return to the Silicon Valley Football Classic with Georgia Tech up 7-3. In San Jose, Georgia Tech on top of Fresno State, 7-3. A reminder that Wednesday, Capital One Bowl Week concludes on ESPN, 9.30 Eastern. Chris Lee and Kirk break down all the day's bowl games on a special edition of College Game Day presented by Discover Card. Then at 11 a.m., John Navarre and the Michigan Wolverines meet Rex Grossman and the Florida Gators in the Outback Bowl. You won't want to miss that one. 7-3 our score here in this Silicon Valley Football Classic. Fresno State wearing the red uniforms and Rodney Davis bottled up. And you get a feeling that Georgia Tech, the defense, is kind of getting a, a feel for the uh, the rhythm of the Fresno State offense. They're not gonna they're not gonna set back and, and let uh, Fresno State dominate the line of scrimmage like that. You're gonna see John Denuta, the defensive coordinator, I keep mentioning his name because he's such a good football coach. You're gonna see him bring pressure. Bring those outside linebackers and strong safety up on the line of scrimmage and force Fresno State into a passing situation. So a second and ten after no gain on first down. Pinniger will operate from the shotgun. Three wide receivers go right. Fake to Davis. Out to Jennings. He makes a man miss. Jennings to the 40. Jennings first down. And Adam Jennings is run out of bounds by Jeremy Myers. First a 14-yard pickup. Adam Jennings, a defender last year. Coach moved to wide receiver, and he's really responded. This is a great job running by Adam Jennings. He should have been stopped for, for no gain or even a loss in the backfield. You're going to see Tech's defenders are in great position. Uh, I think the field conditions had a little bit to do with that because it looked like they, they were slipping, didn't break down to make the tackle in the open field. They always say the offensive player has the advantage because he knows where he is going. So a first down for Fresno State. Fresno State, a very balanced offense. Once again, Pinnaker in the pass behind Davis. Chris, you bring up a real good point. There's absolutely no question that the wide receivers and running backs have an advantage on the field like this. They know exactly where they're going, and uh, the defenders are going to have trouble making tackles in the open field. Of course, last year, David Carr uh, leading the Fresno State attack and becoming the number one choice in the NFL and Pat Hill a, a good reputation for developing quarterbacks of course uh, Trent Dilfer Billy Bullock and David Carr are now in the NFL and Pat Hill knows a good one when he sees it look at the first 11 starts for these two and their numbers compare very favorably we got five defensive backs on the field now for Georgia Tech in this passing situation second and 16 vinegar looking long over the middle pass incomplete Pass intended for Duncan Reed. Did you like to have your quarterbacks work out of the shotgun, Coach, or would you like to have them drop back? No, I'd rather have them out of the shotgun. Get them off the line of scrimmage, give them time to see the, see what the defense is showing before the ball snap. They have a better chance of throwing the ball down the field. That was a great play right there by the middle linebacker, Darrell Smith, running with the tight end on what we call a vertical route. So third down coming up, third and long. And the kind of situation that you might see the Georgia Tech defense tee off on. Daryl Smith, number 51, the middle linebacker, one of the great ones in the country. Here they come, Pinnaker throws incomplete. What Tech is doing is bringing, they're bringing more people from one side of the field than, uh, than Fresno State can block. That time, uh, Pinnaker had to get rid of the football. As a matter of fact, got hit just as he released the ball. The pass was intended for DeAndre Gilbert. Good cover by Marvius Hester. So an apparent uh, hunting situation for Fresno State. Remember, they faked the last one, a fourth and 16. Jonathan Smith is the return man. Short punt. Takes a bulldog bounce and then drops dead at the 22. So a short kick for Simpson, 35 yards, no return. Georgia Tech has an outstanding bowl record. In terms of a percentage, the Yellow Jackets have the best winning percentage of any team in America. And I was a little bit surprised when I saw that, Coach. Uh, Georgia Tech and Penn State, as, as you can see, have the best record of any team. Of course, Joe Paterno doesn't lose many of those bowl games either. Bobby Dodd at Georgia Tech did a great job in the bowl game. So first down, Georgia Tech going in motion is Smith. Suggs looking deep. 
Now he's flushed out, throws on the run, and the pass is incomplete. Pass intended for Jonathan Smith. Let's check in once again with Reese Davis. Reese? Been a sum both Purdue and Washington and turnover to miscue has been a problem for Purdue all season long. Kyle Orton dumps it off to the freshman Brandon Jones. He finds some room, but he puts the ball on the ground. But this time, Ray Williams has his back. Touchdown Boilers. It's a three-point game in the third. Maurice, uh, turnovers have led to both scores here at the Silicon Valley Bowl. An interception and a fumble. Michael Sampson back into the backfield for Georgia Tech on second and ten. And the ball to Sampson. Now to Sampson tackled by Cameron Worrell. We're seeing Georgia Tech use a lot of different formations so far in the ballgame. We've seen unbalanced line. We've seen two tight ends. We've seen two backs in the backfield. That time they had two tight ends, single back, two wide receivers, trying to find out what kind of defense they're going to see against each formation. Third and nine coming up. Four wide receivers for Tech. Fresno State blitz. Here they come. Suggs steps up. His receiver fell down. Now he'll run. And Suggs is tripped up from behind. He's got the first down, however. Guy McIntyre tracking him down. Uh, excellent protection by the Georgia Tech offensive line. Chris, I like Suggs. Pull him up, pulling the ball down and running for the first down. Don't throw the ball down to coverage. Don't take a bad play. Take what the defense gives you. Move forward. Move the chains. Keep the ball in your in your possession. Great job of, of, of avoiding the sack. Taking the ball down the field. Picking up the necessary yardage for the first down. Chan Gailey's yellow jackets on the move again. Suggs threw the one interception, but uh, the, Despite that, he has looked fairly sharp. Pitch the ball to Michael Sampson. And Sampson crosses the 40. Tackled by D. Meza. And that is going to be the end of the first quarter. So the Silicon Valley Football Classic is underway. Two teams that have never played before. Interesting first quarter. Georgia Tech leading Fresno State 7-3. My name is Dan Fenton, President and CEO of the San Jose Convention Visitors Bureau, and I'd like to personally welcome you to San Jose, the capital of Silicon Valley, for the third annual Silicon Valley Football Classic. We're excited about the Fresno State Bulldogs and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets being in this year's Silicon Valley Football Classic. So please enjoy the game, and we look forward to seeing you in San Jose for many more Silicon Valley Football Classics in the years to come. San Jose, California, America's 11th largest city, and it has turned into a beautiful day here at Spartan Stadium. Georgia Tech leading Fresno State 7-3, a, a cozy crowd. They were expecting 15 to 20,000. It's a sea of red on the far side, Coach. And right now, uh, the Georgia Tech uh, fans and cheerleaders, they are fired up. Their Georgia Tech lead, they lead 7-3. Time of possession has really favored Fresno State in this one. Ten minutes to just about five minutes. Jonathan Smith with the short run. In the first quarter, Fresno State gave the ball to Rodney Davis, and he became uh, Fresno State's all-time single-season rushing leader. Then a little later, a perfect strike. A.J. Suggs to Kerry Watkins, a 35-yard touchdown pass. And it is 7-3. Georgia Tech with a first down, and it's uh, 45. Suggs going deep again. He's got a man out there. It's LaKeldrick Bridges, and we've got pass interference. And once again, the man in the middle of it, cornerback D. Meza. So LaKeldrick Bridges, he is a freshman from Dallas, Texas. He is the fastest wide receiver for Georgia Tech, and he had the afterburners on, Coach. They got the, the matchup they wanted there. You mentioned Bridges, number 85, does have the speed. And it's quite obvious that was a pass interference penalty. In college football, that's only a 15-yard penalty. Pass interference, though. defense, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. You can see the ball was underthrown, but there was definitely contact made before the ball got to the wide receiver. 
Fresno State secondary, they lost their top cover corner, Kendall Edwards, early in the year to a knee injury. Then Demario Renault was one of the seven not eligible to play in this game. So Pat Hill's secondary is really thin and being victimized at the moment. Is Zemefi is the running back, and they hand it to Ace. Up the middle he goes. Ace is Zemefi, running hard, fumbles the football, and Fresno State's got it. Fresno State has it. Number 92, Dell Hawkins. So Hawkins hobbled by a knee, didn't start today, but he's Johnny on the spot, coach. Great run by the red shirt freshman, or the true freshman here, Azimami, Ace Azimami, 6'1", 225 pounder, but he's got a hold on to the football. That's probably one reason he hadn't played any more than he has so far this season. Bryce McGill, number five, one of the men knocking it loose and the second tech turnover. Just the start of the second quarter. Tech leading the Bulldogs, 7-3. Paul Pinnegar, first down, hand the ball to Rodney Davis, slips a tackle, and makes his way for about five. You hate to see those turnovers, Chris. And one thing as a football coach, that's probably the number one factor in whether or not you win or lose a football game. The team that makes the fewest mistakes usually the team that wins the ball game. Georgia Tech, difficulty in the running game this year. They lost their great player, Tony Hollings, who was leading the nation in rushing. Sidney Ford, Gordon Clinksdale, Jonathan Jackson. And the running backs they're playing these days are freshmen. Quick hitch, and the pass caught by Jermaine Jamison, and Jamison out of bounds, maybe a yard short of the first down. Tackle made by Kieran Fox. Fox running him out of bounds. You can see that, that again, the defender here, I think the wide receiver has the advantage because he knows where he's going. The defensive back needs to break down, get his feet up under him in the uh, sloppy field like this and make a sure tackle. Good job, good job of the safety getting over and knocking the wide receiver out of bounds. Jermaine Jamison, a fourth team freshman All-America this year. One of the top freshmen in the Western Athletic Conference. Third and one now. And the ball to Rodney Davis. He's got the first down and a little bit more. Coming up to make the tackle, Jeremy Myers. You know, interesting story about Jeremy Myers. Uh, Frank Signetti was watching him on tape. And I asked him about him at the meeting the other night, and he said, you know, he just looks like another guy on tape. But then when he called his brother, Kurt, who's a recruiting coordinator in North Carolina State, he said, you know, he may look like that on tape, but he's a lot better than you think he is. All he does is make plays. He's a free safety, the leader of that defensive football team, and, and he, he makes all the calls, gets the lines up right, and makes plays in the second half. Davis got to first down from the 37. Fake the ball to Davis. Pinnegar rushed. Now flushed out, got plenty of time to look. And Pinnegar will keep it. And he tucks it and scampers out to the 45-yard line. So Paul Pinnegar, he hasn't run a lot this year. Doing some nifty footwork and he gains nine. That, that's a, a cardinal mistake is made right there by Wimbush, the outside linebacker. You don't leave your feet, you keep your feet up under. When you leave your feet, the quarterback fakes off, he's gonna throw the football. Fakes him off his feet. Runs right by and picks up a necessary yard for first down. Coach, can you have a cardinal sin committed by a yellow jacket? Is, it, is uh, that legal in football? You, you just saw it. You just, you just saw it right there. You stay, keep your feet on the ground. You can't make a tackle when, you, when your feet are off the ground. Bryson Sumlin comes into the game, a big running back. And they hand the ball to Sumlin, and he is driven back. So Bryce Sumlin, a redshirt freshman from Bakersfield, California, no gain. And Ricardo Wimbush uh, coming up quickly. Second team all ACC starting his 50th straight game. Linebackers really tops. I think Sporting News rated this the second best linebacking group in America at the start of the season. You know, I would agree with that. Uh, all three of those linebackers, Wimbush, Smith, and Fox. Uh, Fox has 76 tackles. Wimbush has uh, 83 on the year. And Daryl Smith, 87 tackles. So they're always around the football. Third and one from the 46. Fresno State, two of seven on third down so far. Sumlin, straight ahead he goes, and he's got the first down. So he's more of a pounder. He's tackled by Daryl Smith. Again, Chris, that right side of that offensive line, Shaq and Shy, the right tackle, number 75, Joe Shy, and Darton, 
Starting on uh, Shaq, number 50. Did a great job coming off the ball. Pat Hill. He's been quoted as saying, the only job I ever wanted was the Fresno State job. He got it six years ago, and he has built a powerhouse in the San Joaquin Valley. First down, Fresno State trailing 7-3. Hand the ball to Sumlin. And Bryce Sumlin running hard. Tackled by Jeremy Myers. You know, there was a good story about Bryce Sumlin. Pat Hill asked him to switch positions last year, and Sumlin thought about quitting the team. He didn't want to switch positions. He was a defensive back, but now he's on offense, and he's really flourishing as the backup to Davis. Uh, and, and he's doing a good job. I like him better as a blocker than I do as a ball carrier. Okay. You know, if you want to play, you do what the head coach tells you. You play whatever position will get you on the field. Second and two after an eight-yard pickup by Bryson Sumlin. Vinegar and the ball once again to Sumlin. And the Fresno State offensive line is opening up some good holes. Ricardo Wimbush up to make the tackle, but not before Sumlin gets five. Sumlin, Sumlin keeps those feet driving. I can see why they like him. He's he, Again, he's got low center of gravity. Not real big. He's only 193 pounds, 5'10". Low center of gravity. And going into this ball game, Chris, he's only carried the ball 59 pounds, averaging 4.2 yards a carry. 11 minutes to play, second quarter. Georgia Tech leading Fresno State 7-3. Silicon Valley football classic. Fresno State put together a nice little drive here and a timeout called. Now, that's a good move there by the center. Rodney Michael, a veteran center. Okay. Ball, get ball, get, you got a wet ball, you can ask the official, hey, give me get, give me a dry ball. Dry it off. Give me a dry ball. Ninth play of the drive for Fresno State. Give the ball to Sumlin. And the Georgia Tech defense responds. Jeremy Myers was there. And the converted quarterback, Tony Hargrove, number 44, making the tackle, loss of three. Fresno State, uh, 320 pounds per man, uh, right behind Toledo. Uh, big guys better on a wet track, Coach. Just get them out there. No, no question about it. The big guy has an advantage in a, in a sloppy field like this, coming off the ball, particularly when you're running north to south. Rodney Davis back in. Davis covered in mud. He went down in a mud puddle early. Now Pinnaker to pass. And second and 13, fires it over the middle, incomplete. Pass intended for Adam Jennings. Let's check in with Tracy. Thanks, guys. Well, there are similarities statistically between Pinnaker and Carr, but head coach Pat Hill said there is a big difference between these two as well. He said Carr was so accurate with his throws. Pinnaker, on the other hand, while he has great vision and a great release, the accuracy is just not there yet. But remember, he's just a redshirt freshman. Pat Hill says if he continues to progress the way he has this year, he has a shot to follow in Carr's footsteps and be a first-round draft pick. Tracy, you're exactly right. I believe he said Carr never threw one that you didn't know where it was going. He always launched it in a in a precise manner. Sometimes Pinnaker will throw the the inopportune pass. That pass batted down by Kieran Fox on third and 13, and now fourth down coming up. So the protection breaks down this time, Coach. Uh, pr protection wasn't bad. Just a good job right here by, by Fox getting his hands up. Get your hands up. Make that quarterback throw the ball up in the air, particularly on a screen pass. If you're the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, do you blitz more, or is it more concentrating on stopping the run right now? Is that their, their problem? I think you've got to stop the run. I okay. think you've got, to, you've got to put eight people up in the box, stop the run, make the quarterback beat you throwing the football. Jason Simpson, who's had an outstanding year, the WAC's top punter at 41 yards per punt. He averaged the most yards in the WAC, but he was named second team all WAC. And he's dropped a number of them inside the 20. Deep is Smith, and he picks it at the 8. Jonathan Smith, and a nice return out to the 19-yard line, tackled by Therian Fontenot after a 32-yard punt. Nine minutes and 40 seconds to play, first half. The Jackets over the dogs at the moment, 7-3. Silicon Valley Football Classic continuing here in San Jose, California. Chris Marlowe with the coach, John Cooper, and Tracy Wolfson patrolling the sidelines. 7-3, Georgia Tech has the lead. Georgia Tech with the ball. Ace Zemafi is in as the running back. The pass complete to Jonathan Smith. Breaks the tackle, past the 20, and he's out 
to the 28-yard line, tackled by Claude Sanders. Chris, I like Jonathan Smith a lot. I, I, he's got that burst you're looking for. That's the reason he's played so many different positions. That was actually a lateral. That ball was thrown backwards. It's almost like tossing the ball to him, running the toss sweep. Get the ball outside, let him go north and south, get those shoulder pads turned up the field, and make positive yardage. Eight-yard carry. And now uh, Georgia Tech will line up in the eye. Second and three. And the carry for Ace Azemafi. We mentioned that uh, Tony Hollings started the year. He played the first four games and was injured on this play. He was leading the nation in rushing before that play. And he tore up his knee bad. And a terrible moment for Georgia Tech fans. And then later in the year, Gordon Clinksdale in the Georgia game, he tore up his knee. In between, uh, Sidney Ford went out with a concussion. And just some of the difficulties that uh, first-year coach Chan Gailey has faced. Uh, just a massive amount of injuries at the running back position. Now a third down and two for the Jackets from their 28. And off is Zemafi. He's driving, and he's going to be very close to the first down. I don't think he made it, Chris. I don't think he made it. That was a good job of the left, the left side of the defensive front by Fresno State. I'm impressed with these Tech running backs. Well, they must those, those guys there early in the year must have been great backs to play ahead of these guys. No gain, so the Fresno State defense responds. And there's a good look. And the great Tony Hollings are hoping to have him back next year. Now Chris Morehouse in the punt. He's got the NFL leg, and he's got a low line drive returnable. Jennings gets a block, trying to swing it to the outside, and he does. And Fresno State's going to have great field position when we return. Seven and a half minutes to go after a 33-yard punt. Georgia Tech ahead 7-3. Back at the Silicon Valley Football Classic, Georgia Tech leading 7-3. And a solid crowd here. They have traveled here and far to see the Bulldogs and the Jackets go at it. Fresno State with a first down. Paul Pinniger has been erratic so far. He throws on a bounce as intended for Duncan Reed. Frank Signetti is the young offensive coordinator for Fresno State. And interestingly, when we talked to him last night, Coach, he was he was almost giddy about facing this blitz scheme of Georgia Tech. The offensive coordinator, particularly an offensive coordinator who likes to throw the football, loves to see defensive, uh, a defense that's going to blitz. They like, they like to get their matchups like that. If they can protect their quarterback, they got a chance to throw the ball down the field. Second and ten. Good fake to Davis. And the pass nearly caught DeAndre Gilbert. The Fresno uh, State passing game has been slow, Coach. Hester was the cover. A good, a good example here of Paul Penninger's arm. I'm impressed with the velocity on the football. Threw that ball all the way across the field. And uh, Hester almost came up with a big, big, big catch, number 87. As Tracy Wolfson was saying earlier, uh, Paul Pinnegard, yes, does have the big arm and does have the bright future, but his accuracy, not that of David Carr. And uh, when he gets a little bit of more accuracy, can you teach accuracy, Coach? Uh, you can improve it a little bit. I, okay. I, I, think, uh, I think a lot of times you're born with, with uh, instinct and accuracy and things like that. You can work on it and get better. Third and ten. Pinnegard all day to throw. Thought about running it. Here he comes. He needs a block to get to the first down marker, and he's got it. So Paul Pinniger driving past the 40, has the first down. Yeah, Pinniger uh, showing us that he's got some wheels. He looked like he was a little surprised to me that he gained that many yards. Looked like he thought he was going to get knocked out of bounds and just kept going and uh, moved the chains again. 15-yard gain for Pinniger. And there's a marker down. Looks like it came at the end of the play. Ooh, lowering his shoulder, coach. I think Georgia Tech defenders, the defensive backs, thought he was going to run out of bounds. He kept uh, he kept those shoulders square and stayed in bounds. Again, that's a good smart move by uh, a young quarterback. And Pat Hill is energized, and it's going to be a personal foul against Georgia Tech. So Hill, maybe Pinnegar was hit out of bounds. 
I didn't see him get hit out of bounds. It looked like he, they thought he was going to go out of bounds, and then he stayed in bounds. I didn't. I did not see the late hit. Pat Hill, with the retirement of uh, head coach uh, Jerry Tarkanian, he is the uh, top dog in the valley. Let's go back. End of the play on the sideline. A little extracurricular. Oh, James Butler, a little pushing and shoving. James Butler, sophomore, young sophomore, made a mistake. How do you how do you discipline a player for for something well, like that, gotta, coach? You or gotta, can you? You got to set him on the bench. The okay. Best ally you got to bench. First down at the 26. Hand off Rodney Davis, and he is bottled up. He'll lose a couple. Tony Hargrove coming up to make the play along with Kieran Fox. Tony Hargrove started his career once again as a quarterback and a safety as a senior in high school. And they said they want to bulk up and play the defensive line. I don't know what kind of a advantage that is, but Hargrove's had an excellent year. Four sacks, 12 tackles for loss, and he's getting down and dirty. They feel like he's our best defensive lineman. Well, they gave Davis a one-yard gain. Hinegar, wide open, pass incomplete. In and out of the hands of the talented freshman, Jermaine Jamison. He had some drops earlier in the year, but he had thought that he had cured that. That was a catchable ball, Coach. Hinegar put that one right on the money. You've got to make that catch. A good, a good round, but by, by Jamison made, ran a good round, good post route. You can see Paul Penninger very upset. When you get, the, you get that much time to throw the football and you throw the ball as well as he did, you've got to get some re better results out of the play than that. Penninger, 7 of 18 for just 48 yards. Clock ticking, we're under six and a half minutes. Georgia Tech leading Fresno State 7 to 3. Penninger, one of his last eight. He'll take it out of the shotgun. Blitz. Penninger backs up, back and back and throws pass complete. That's going to be back to the line of scrimmage. Jamison making the catch. Chris, that was great coverage by the Georgia Tech secondary. That time they only rushed four defensive linemen, seven guys on the pass defense, and playing what we call man underneath zone coverage. If you can get the pressure with four, then you don't have to blitz, do you, Coach? Absolutely. You got you got to give them some change ups. You got to make sure that the quarterback doesn't, you know, just uh, get in a good rhythm like that. Matter of fact, that's that's the number one thing you talk about when you rush your passer. Get him out of his rhythm. Hassan Asparuha is going to try a 42-yarder. He made one from 22. And once again, this is well within his range. Low kick. And it is good. Hassan Asparuha, two for two. Five and a half minutes to play. Georgia Tech up 7-6. Back at Spartan Stadium, the Silicon Valley Classic continuing 7-6 Georgia Tech on top. It's a muddy day, a muddy track. The sun has come out, but the players uh, reveling in the mud and the, and the soak. Even Pat Hill's got a little bit of mud on him as we get set for the kickoff from Fresno State. Asper Ruhoff the kick, and Kerry Watkins is deep. Big guys up front love to play in the field conditions like that. They like to slide around in the mud. A slop in that muddy play pen. Asperuha, deep kick. Nicely done. Watkins, will he bring it out? No. You know, we mentioned Georgia Tech's uh, proud uh, bowl history that they've been in 30. Well, the last time they were in California, the 1929 Rose Bowl. They played against Cal in that game, and the turning point in that game, one of the most famous plays in college football history, Tech halfback Stumpy Thompson was hit by Cal's Betty Lom. Roy Regals comes in, grabs the ball, and then starts to run the wrong way for Cal. Got turned the wrong direction, ran 64 yards before his own teammates hauled him down. That play led to a safety. Tech added a touchdown later, missed the extra point. They won 8-7. And from then on, Cal's uh, Roy Regals was nicknamed Wrong Way Roy Regals. Good player, though. 7-6, the Jackets. And Jonathan Smith, he takes the toss. And Smith slips and gets maybe one. Short game. 
Those linemen like the mud. The backs don't like it. We've seen several times here where the backs uh, slip down. Their feet fly out from under. We knew, we knew Georgia Tech was going to run today. That has been their game plan all season long to run the football. And even without uh, their top running backs, they continue to pound it, Coach. They're going to try to pound it. I, 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 uh, this is a good time here for a little, little, little draw play. Draw a screen. Second and nine. Suggs. Toss sweep. Ace Zemefi. Zemefi's run well. He did have the one fumble. He takes it up to the 25 yard line, a gain of four. Ace Azemafe, his uh, real name is a Geneve Christopher Azemafe. So that's what they call him Ace, A C E. And we'll stick with that. Now, Sampson comes out, and a big third down for Georgia Tech. Smith and Azemafe in the eye. Now, Smith comes in motion. Suggs will throw for it. Launches one deep. Incomplete. Pass intended for Kerry Watkins at midfield. Covering was D. Mesa and James Sanders. They had him. That's a good way to attack two deep coverage. You, you get the ball in the seam, throw it behind the defensive back and in, in, in the front of the safety. Make the safety come over and make the play. Long way for the safety to go. Suggs just three of seven for 48 yards. He did, however, have the perfect strike. And he chats with Chan Galen. So set to kick is Dan Dyke. And deep to return. And Fresno State adept at blocking kicks. Nearly had that one. Jennings. And Jennings dragged out of bounds near the 42-yard line. So a good play by the Fresno State special teams. A 30-yard kick. And when we come back, the Bulldogs will have it trailing by one. Back on the muddy track in San Jose, California. Georgia Tech leading Fresno State 7-6. Tonight, Capital One Bowl Week continues on both networks, ESPN, the ESPN2, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. The Tennessee Volunteers take on the Maryland Terrapins in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. That will be from the Georgia Dome. Then on ESPN2, 10.30 Eastern, Air Force goes up against Virginia Tech. The inaugural Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Coach John Cooper, who do you like there? I'll tell you, Ralph Friedgen has done a great job. The former offensive coordinator for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets done a great job at Maryland. That will be a great ball game. I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if Maryland doesn't beat Tennessee. How about Air Force and Virginia Tech? Well, you got to like Virginia Tech in that ball game. Frank Beamer at Virginia Tech does a great job, but particularly with special teams. And, I would uh, I would take the team to take that ball. 7-3 at the end of the first quarter. It is now 7-6. The Bulldogs with just two field goals. You get the feeling that the Bulldog offense is yet to get on track. Rodney Davis rushed well early at 52 yards in the first quarter, but Tech has held him to nine here in the second quarter. And Pinninger, it looks like he's rushing a little. Pass intended for Jamison. You, you got it. That's a that's a, a high percentage pass. You've got to complete that. You throw the ball out, and it's almost like a toss sweep. You throw the ball out to your wide receiver, and get the lead blocks in front, but the, you know you've got to throw the ball down so he can catch it and become a runner. Paul Pinnegar started the year as the backup to Jeff Grady, the junior from Huntington Beach, who waited uh, three years to get a chance to play. And there is Jeff. He played behind Billy Bullock and David Carr, got his chance to start this year, then got injured, paving the way for the emergence of Paul Pinnegar. So Grady now the backup. Pinnegar hands off to Davis. Davis breaks a tackle and snaps his way near the first down. He's crossed midfield down to the 46. Kieran Fox has had an active game making the tackle. I think Fresno State needs to stay on the ground. I think that's what they're doing best right now in this field, pos field position here. The offensive line dominating the line of scrimmage, as you can see. Come off the ball, keep those shoulder pads down low, and give this running, young running back a chance to, to move the ball, uh, to, to run the ball north and south. Talked a lot about uh, Pinnaker passing the ball, but the, the Fresno State passing attack has not been effective so far today. Well, I you, agree with you. You throw it, you throw it enough to keep the defense honest, but you, but when they start ganging up on you, you got to throw the football. Otherwise, I think the best thing Fresno State can do right now with the big offensive line is control the football and run the ball. Spoken like a man who used to coach at Ohio State University. Run the football, Coach Cooper. Run, run, the, run, run. Run the football. Most of the time, the team that gains the most yards rushing wins the football game. That isn't true in all these bowl games. But uh, if you can run the football, you've got a better chance, better than 50% 50, 50 chance of winning the game. Chan Gailey's Yellow Jackets against Pat Hill's Bulldogs. Two interesting personalities. Davis 
has rushed 15 times for 70 yards now. He stays in as the running back. First down from the 47. And off Davis. And they work left side. Davis. He's got another first down. Running behind Logan Mankins and Victor Tefani. The tackle made by Jeremy Myers. Let's check in with Reese. Chris, coming up on the Dodge Halftime Report, Boise State hardly took a humanitarian approach when dealing with Iowa State this afternoon. We'll check in on a Big Ten, Pac-10 matchup and look ahead to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Maurice Claret speaks about his personal situation. That's all coming up at the half. Maurice Claret, would you coach as the Ohio State coach, would you have let him go back to attend the funeral? Well, it, it all depends on, uh, you know, I don't know all the, all the circumstances okay. there. I, I, the answer, Friend got shot. But he wanted to go back to first attend reaction, the First reaction, yes, let him go back. Okay. But you got, you got NCAA rules that you have to follow also. So you got to make careful you don't violate any of those rules. Georgia Tech defense. They allow just under 20 points a game on the year and 130 rushing yards. A pretty good defense in the ACC. In the Maurice, Maurice Perrette situation, yeah. as I understand it, I think he had a friend that got shot. Right. And he wanted to go back. Now, the NCAA will let you send him back, but you've got certain forms. Well, you, you send him out. back if it's a family member, correct? No, you can send him back. You can send him back under some other circumstances, right. but you have to fill these forms out and get them approved before you can do that. All right. They're just part of the uh, ongoing controversy. That should spice things up just a bit. I'll tell you, Maurice Barrett is an excellent football player. Not only is he a freshman, he's a great football player. Second down and nine. Paul Pinneger has been erratic passing so far. Rodney Davis has been solid rushing the football. They keep it on the ground with Davis. And right up the middle he goes until he's pushed back at the 30. So Davis grinds out three yards. If you just joined us, once again, seven Fresno State players unable to play in this game because of academics, not eligible to play in the game. It's a, it's a matter of semantics. There were two on offense, five on defense, five of them starters for Pat Hill. And uh, it's something that has really frustrated uh, Coach Hill because he has really worked hard to try to make academics part of this Fresno State football program. No, no question about it. But, you know, I don't think it's affected the play of the football team here this afternoon. You, Georgia Tech's only scored one touchdown, so it hadn't, it hadn't hurt the defensive team that much. Third and six now for Fresno State. Watch for Steven Spock out of the backfield. Pinnegar throws, pass complete. Duncan Reed, the tight end, gets the first down. Tight end choice. You like that matchup. You got your tight end matched up against an outside linebacker. Just a little, you know, if he, if he goes, the linebacker goes inside, yep. the tight end goes outside. Covering good, on the play, Ricardo matchup. Wimbush. Good matchup. Good, uh, good job throwing and catching the football. So we're under a minute and a half. 7-6. Georgia Tech. Fresno State threatening. Spock in motion, hand the ball, Rodney Davis. And Davis dropped for no gain. Good defensive pursuit. We mentioned uh, how young that uh, defensive line is. One of the seniors that time, Gary Johnson, getting in on the play. I think you can have more success running north and south on the field like this, Chris. Pat Hill. We mentioned the seven players are not here. And a little earlier, Pat Hill gave us his take on the whole academic situation. Well, we just got to clarify the word ineligible. It's a whack ruling that was put into effect this year. Our finals were done on the 19th. Grades are due January 3rd. We had to certify every player on our football team with grades in the computer, verifying six satisfactory progress units towards their degree. 84 players were certified. And our instructors did a great job getting them in in eight days. Uh, they didn't need to get them in until the 3rd of January, and we're playing on the 31st. And seven young men weren't certified. Two of those seven did not have enough units. The other five still have units out or incomplete grades. So really, it's not a matter of ineligibility by NCAA standards. Everybody's eligible. It, it, it's a matter of certification. 84 of our players were certified. Seven were not. 
Well, it's an interesting situation. The bottom line, they're not eligible to play in this game, but Pat Hill does have somewhat of a point, doesn't he? He, he has a point. I understand where he's coming from, being a head coach as long as I coach, but, you know, to me, that's the academic responsibility. You've got an academic counselor. You've got to get the grades. I mean, we, the instructors don't have to turn the grades in until January 3rd, but you got to, as a football coach, you need them before that. You've got to make sure your kids are eligible. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. How much is the coach responsible for academic problems? Well, he's responsible because he, he, need, he needs those players you know he's, he's judged on your one loss record so you need those players to help you give you a better chance of winning the football game just over a minute to play here in the first half Pinnaker bobbles the snap and he's in trouble he throws it to Davis it's nearly picked off Whoa, a wild play call it incomplete at the 30 one of the players uh, not eligible to play today was Nick Burley, and this was an, an email to the Fresno B. There should have been a lesson to all players. The rules are rules. You don't get, take care of your business. This what can happen. This is what can happen to you. Well, it's a shame a player like Nick Burley is not playing in this ball game. He's been picked to play in the East-West game, the Hula Bowl game, an outstanding football player. But you're not seeing the last of Nick Burley. He'll be playing a lot of football on Sunday afternoon. Fresno State, can the Bulldogs get the ball in the end zone with 55 seconds to go? On third down, hand the ball to Davis. And it looks like uh, Fresno State playing for field position here, Coach. Not all bad. I, I, I don't disagree with that call. Put the ball in the middle of the field. You've got a great field goal kicker. Put the ball in the middle of the field where uh, the, the conditions are good and uh, got a good chance here to take the lead on the, on the, on the field goal. Four-yard run, Smith and Hargrove making the tackles. Timeout called. We're coming back. 38 seconds to play. 7 6, Georgia Tech. We're back, fourth and six. A field goal attempt coming up for Asen Asparuhoff. Jason Simpson is the holder. And the snapper, Kevin Murphy. So Asen trying to go three for three and give Fresno State the lead. Bangs it hard. No good. No good. <laughs> Stop the presses. Asparuhoff missed one. Put the ball right in the middle of the field. A chip shot field goal, and your best place kicker misses it. Misses it. The all-conference place kicker misses it. Reuben Houston with the pressure. A reminder, Wednesday, the Bowl Championship Series kicks off on ABC. Big 12 champs, uh, number eight, Oklahoma, make their first trip to the Rose Bowl in school history. Sooners face the Pac-10 champion, number seven, Washington State Cougars. The Rose Bowl game presented by PlayStation 2. That's 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific on ABC Sports Championship Television. Chris Marlowe, John Cooper, Tracy Wolfson. Low-scoring affair between Georgia Tech of the ACC and Fresno State of the Western Athletic Conference. The Bulldogs are playing without seven of their top players. And Georgia Tech, uh, injury-prone all year. They've had some problems. Both teams have faced adversity this year. And uh, we've got a close game. Have a moment. We'd like to salute the men and women, the United States Air Force in Europe, watching the Silicon Valley Classic on Armed Forces Network. The American Forces Network, including members of the 85th Operation Squadron at Naval Air Station Keflavik, Iceland. We keep the F-15s flying. And happy holidays to all the guys and girls up there. The fly it says the fly boys and the fly. You can't say the fly girls, can you? Fly women. I wonder if Keflavik is near Reykjavik. <laughs> Bobby Fisher. Well, we're glad you're with us here on ESPN2. Chris, the difference between a, a, a pro football coach, a professional football coach, and a college football coach, we're seeing it right here. Chan Gailey, with the pro experience, takes time out, and they're, tr they're still, still trying to move the ball down the field. I'm a college coach. I would take a knee right here and run out to run the clock out. I wouldn't take any chances on turning the ball over when I'm backed up on my own 25-yard line with only 26 seconds left to, left to go in the first half. Replacing George O'Leary, who left for Notre Dame, and you might recall that entire saga. Michael Sampson is the running back. Fresno State shows blitz for a moment, then backs out. Suggs launches one. Mesa has got the interception. D. Mesa at the 40. He's got a convoy of blockers. D. Mesa! Touchdown, Fresno State!
And Coach John Cooper, a 48-yard interception return for a touchdown. And your experience told you that, that might not be the thing to do. That's why you take a knee. You don't take any chances. You're leading in the ball game. If you complete the pass, you still got 50 yards to go for a first for a, for a touchdown with 14 seconds left to go in the first half. D. Mesa victimized early, and he gets uh, some redemption. The ball was underthrown. They were thrown into the win. Also, the ball was underthrown. D. Mesa came back, played the ball. It uh, played the, did a great job playing the football. He's playing zone coverage. Played the ball and not only made a good interception, made a great run down the sideline, put the ball in the end zone. So Fresno State looking like a two-point uh, formation there, but no, they'll go for one here with Asparuha. 14 seconds to go and a huge play, turnaround play here in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. High snap. Asparuha gets it down and drills it so what a turn of events chan gailey's yellow jackets leading just a moment ago but suggs throws his second interception and d Mesa makes the most of it and let's give the defensive line for fresno state a little credit here they were right in, in suggs's face when he threw the ball put a lot of pressure on him just as he released the football he also he's throwing off his back foot you gotta you gotta step forward plant your foot your feet and throw the ball down the field with a lot more velocity than that and D. Meza took over as the starting quarterback with the injury to Kendall Edwards during the year. And this, the secondary has been picked upon, quite frankly. The coaches have said it, but uh, they respond. They, they respond right there. It's, it's a good example. With three deep zone defense uh, late to go in the, in, the, in, the, in the half, keep everything in front of you. And I will also make, make the comment that, that once that ball was intercepted, it was, we saw a great job of the Fresno State defense getting out in front. A wall of blockers going down the sideline, leading Mason in the end zone for the touchdown. So the 5'9 junior from Santa Ana victimizes Chan Gailey. And the offensive cognoscente, Bill O'Brien, uh, the offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech. And A.J. Suggs with his second interception. And that one was a costly one. So Kerry Watkins is deep. Fresno State on the board, leading 13-7. Side kick. It's rolling free and it's recovered by Georgia Tech. Fresno State's biggest win of the year came against Colorado State. The Bulldogs roaring in the first half on a 59 yard Adam Jennings punt return. They went up 29 to 14, but Colorado State would come back. Dexter win a return of 37. That set up a touchdown. 50 seconds left to go. Bradley Van Pelt and Cecil Sapp could not connect. Fresno State, an impressive win over a ranked team. And Pat Hill, one thing his teams have always been noted for, turnover margin and special teams. They, I think they're second in the nation the last few years in turnover margin. That's, that's what I was talking about. Take a knee, get out of here at halftime. So the Fresno State fans are on their feet. Pat Hill, an outstanding record when he is leading at halftime. 35 and 5. Will the Bulldogs be able to hang on? 35 and 5, 10 of the last 11. Pat Hills Bulldogs turn it around with the big 48 yard interception. All right, we are coming back. Reese Davis, the man that knows everything about all the Bulls. He'll be back to fill you in after these messages. Football Classic here in San Jose, Fresno State leading Georgia Tech. 13 to 7. Welcome back, everybody. Chris Marlowe and John Cooper. A curious decision right near the end of the first half, uh, less than a minute to go, when Chan Gailey and, and the Yellow Jackets decide to gamble, throw the ball up, interception, touchdown. Your take? Well, I think you play the percentages and take a knee. I think you, I think you get out of here at halftime with a 7-6 lead. The way you're playing on defense, make it stand up. But I definitely would not throw the football in that situation. Quarterbacks uh, have not been playing very well lately. 
Paul Pinniger and A.J. Suggs, they've had rough afternoons. Georgia Tech has negative yards throwing football. They're two out of seven, I think, for 25 yards, and, and, they, and they've had two passes intercepted for 55 yards, so they're not doing a very good job protecting the football. What can Georgia Tech do to get things going here in the second half? Again, I think you've got to come out and try to reestablish a running game. Okay. Try to run the ball early in the ball game. Don't get away from your game plan. I mean, it's only a 13-7 ball game at halftime. Go back and run the football. Okay, first half stats. Uh, you know, there are not a lot of stats to, to look at, uh, especially offensively. I guess you could say that the defense has played fairly well, Coach. Total yards, 168 to 125. Both teams able to rush the ball reasonably well, but the, the passing games have been anemic. And the time of possession, it definitely favors Fresno State. They've had the ball, Chris, for 20 minutes, and Georgia Tech's had it for 10. Uh, Fresno's run 52 plays, Georgia Tech's running 23 plays. So uh, when you possess the football that, that, that uh, you know, that many times, uh, that's the reason you're leading the ball. Game. Quickly, you've had quarterbacks play poorly in first halves as a coach. What, did, what do you think uh, uh, Chan Gailey told A.J. Suggs at halftime, if anything? I think he told him to settle down and get back, to get, try to get back in the rhythm. Uh, the coaches, Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator, made, told, as we visited with him yesterday, told us that Suggs, he thought it made a tremendous improvement from the time of the yeah. Georgia game until right now. I thought he took most of the snaps in practice. And, uh, but it's not paying off here this afternoon. Haven't seen it yet. The kick is deep. Fielded by Kerry Watkins at the three. Watkins running cross field. And Watkins brought down near the 25-yard line. Our ESPN game tracker, two huge plays in this game. Fresno State leading three to nothing when Suggs went up top to Watkins. And the victim on the play, number 10, D. Meza, who would get some revenge a little later. Suggs throwing one up right before the end of the half. And number 10, beaten earlier, gets redemption. And watch this wall and D. Meza jamming into the end zone. So Georgia Tech going to start the second quarter, and they're going to bring in their reserve quarterback, Demarius Bilbo, 6'3", redshirt freshman from Moss Point, Mississippi. Highly recruited. You know, I was looking at him uh, in the warm-ups, Coach, and, and we were looking at him through the glasses, and I'm thinking, Michael Vick, this guy's got a physical presence about him. Got hurt in the Georgia game and missed a lot of the of the, uh, the work here preparation for the bowl game. But you can look at him and tell he's a good athlete. I wouldn't be surprised to see him run the football though. Look for him to run the ball more than more, more than he passes. Okay, as you might expect, uh, procedure penalty. Demarius Bilbo, he was the Mississippi State Player of the Year by USA Today. He threw for 32 touchdowns. The Dick Butkus Football Network named him the National High School Player of the Year. So this kid has some talent, and he's got Asa Zemafi with him in the shotgun. So Demarius Bilbo in to start the second half. Off the play fake. Got some time, and now he can do this. He scampers out, and still going at the 32-yard line. So Bilbo gets about six, coming up to make the stop, Bryce McGill. It, it doesn't take you long to see what kind of athlete he is. All of the receivers are covered. That might be the best thing you can do for Georgia Tech is get, let the receivers be covered, give him a chance to run the football. You can see what kind of great athlete he is. 6'3", 220-pound freshman. And he's got the whitest, cleanest jersey in San Jose at the moment. He used to tuck that ball away, though. So Demarius Bilbo, his nickname is Debo, and Debo can go. Second. Second down and one. And there he goes again, and he's tackled immediately. Coming up to make the play, Bryce McGill. Also in on the play, Guy McIntyre. And his jersey not white anymore. Chris, I think that was a called quarterback draw. Trying to get Bill Bow again, uh, the football under his arms, and let him use his athletic ability. Chan Gailey, the previous two seasons, the offensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins. That play loses three, and now a third and four from the 30. Crowd is alive here in Spartan Stadium. Good time to get your quarterback on the corner. Get him outside. Bilbo, right up the middle he goes. And he's very close to the first down. I think he's got it. Tackled by Bryce McGill. So Bilbo, he was actually drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers as a pitcher. He's got some all-around ability. He kicked 10 field goals in high school. I mean, this guy's an all-around athlete, Coach. Uh, and I think this is a good move by uh, the offensive staff, Bill O'Brien, the, the offensive coordinator, and, of course, Sam David, the head coach of Georgia Tech. But, to get the young quarterback in the game. And also, this, this will, will give Suggs a chance to settle down a little bit. 
So just the start of the third quarter, A.J. Suggs, who has a touchdown pass and two interceptions, standing on the sideline at the moment. Fresno State leading 13-7. Fresno State bringing some pressure this time. Bilbo going up on top. Got a man open. Pass incomplete. Will Glover was out there. We got a flag on the play. We got a pass interference on the play, Chris. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be against uh, the redshirt freshman Raymond Washington. You can read Pat Hill's uh, lips. Uh, Ray, don't worry about it. That was a terrible call. We shall see. Here's Jim Jackson. Pass interference, defense, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. You don't get those big plays unless you try for them, but uh, I'll tell you, that looks like a pretty what. good defensive play by, by, by the old secondary coach here. Raymond Washington they're trying to pick on the freshman, but it looked like Raymond Washington made a nice play on that ball. I think that's a solid play. I did not see uh, pass interference. Cornerback extraordinaire Rodney Gilbert would be howling if he was announcing this game. So Georgia Tech with the pitch to Jonathan Smith going nowhere that time coming up to make the play Nate Ray the sophomore from Colfax California coach I, I got a trivia question for you real quick of this uh, Fresno State roster you know a lot of Californians on there how many Californians out of 88 players are on this roster I think 86. 86 of them. 86. We've got a guy from Bulgaria and one guy from American Samoa. The rest are homegrown Californians for Pat Hill. Good job by Dan Brown, the defensive coordinator, bringing pressure on this young quarterback. Second and 10. Bilbo looking to run. And down he goes. Jason Stewart, the senior from Bakersfield, coming in to make the hit. Guy McIntyre there with him. So Demarius Bilbo at the first uh, sign of pressure has, uh, well, he's looking to take off. First sack of the game for Fresno State. Great job by the redshirt freshman, Garrett McIntyre. He's taking the place of uh, Nick Burley. 6'3", 230 pounder, got hurt during the season, but you can see he made a quick recovery and an outstanding play. 34th sack on the season for Fresno State now. Third and 17. Bilbo. Throws a dart right side, looking for Smith incomplete. Broken up by Dean Meza. I'm going to tell you right now, Bilbo has got an arm. He can throw the football. He's got a strong arm. Both of the passes, he's thrown deep. That's good to me. Landing in the mud pile. Good coverage by Dean Meza. Again, we're, we're, we're seeing a lot of zone coverage, not, not as much man-to-man -man coverage as we've seen in, in uh, previous ball games. A lot of zone coverage, three deep zone. Chris Morehouse, the senior from Vernon, Connecticut, is on. He's the big leg of the two punters, and Adam Jennings standing at his 15. Morehouse, beautiful, high kick, but it's going to be a little bit too far, and it bounces into the end zone. So with 11 minutes and 26 seconds to play, after a 57-yard punt, Fresno State ahead 13-7. Chris Marlowe, John Cooper, Tracy Wolfson here at the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Fresno State leading here in the third quarter, 13 to 7. Paul Penninger, 9 of 22 for 58 yards. No touchdowns and no interceptions. Rodney Davis has been the workhorse in the backfield, but his effectiveness has been limited. No gain there. Limited in the second quarter. Ran well in the first quarter. Henderson coming up to make the tackle. Henderson, a freshman All-America, 6'3", 260 from New Orleans. And some good young players on this Tech defense, Coach. Some good young players, and again, I think they're a well-coached football team. You saw the strong safety come up in there then and make it an eight-man front. It's hard to block eight guys uh, when you're trying to run the football. Defensively today, Georgia Tech has been outstanding. Fresno State has been unable to move the ball. Pinnegar got it. DeAndre Gilbert, far side, pass complete. The junior from Fresno. We're going to have a holding penalty, Chris. Marvius bring bring this one back with the coverage. Well, maybe a face mask, the preliminary indication. Let's see. You got a face mask penalty. And it's against Fresno State. The 
looked like the left guard stepped back here and he's got it. He's got his hand on the face mask. He cannot do that. You can't even do that in pro football, let alone college football. That's a 15 yard penalty. So the offensive line has been very effective for Fresno State. As we mentioned, they average uh, 320 pounds per man. Face mask against the offense. Half the distance from the previous spot. Replay second down. You know, when you look at uh, head coach Pat Hill, he, doesn't he look like a closer in baseball, like a like a Goose Gossage or an Al Roboski coach? He uh, looked like he could throw that, that high fast one, right? Exactly. Look at him. Pat Hill's a good, tough, hard-nosed football coach. He's done a great job at Fresno State. I might add, he followed a great football coach. Jim Sweeney did a great job before Pat Hill went there. Sweeney built the program, and Pat Hill trying to take it to the next level. His young quarterback has been a little bit erratic today. Still, the Bulldogs leading 13 to 7. Second and 20. Pinnegar. Short pass. Steven Spock out of bounds near the 14 yard line. Spock, a sophomore from Clovis, California. They like to use him on short yardage. Ricardo Wimbush with the tackle. Here's a big play coming up in the ballgame now. We've got third down and 15 yards to go, and you're backed up, Chris. Again, I don't think you take a lot of chances. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little screen or maybe a draw in this situation. Draw play in this situation. Georgia Tech coming in with their nickel package. Five defensive backs. Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator for Fresno State. Last year, the quarterback's coach for the New Orleans Saints. Let's see what kind of a call he makes. Third and 15. Blitz coming. Pinnaker steps up, in trouble, and down he goes. And maybe a smart play as Eric Henderson makes the stop. Just to follow the football. Follow the football. Don't take any chance to turn the ball over. That's the reason I thought maybe a draw play would be a better choice in that particular situation. Give the ball to your running back as opposed to letting your quarterback have to have me take him some punch. Georgia Tech defense has only allowed a couple of field goals. Simpson will kick. Jonathan Smith is deep. Georgia Tech uh, is missing Kelly Rhino, the all-time leading punt returner for the Yellow Jackets. His dad was a three-time All-American punt returner. Yep, out with a knee injury. Nice high floating kick to Smith at the 45. Gets a block, Smith to the 40, and Georgia Tech is going to have great field position. Tackle mailed by Kyle Goodman. Keeping the balls clean here today. A tough job, and somebody's got to do it. They're doing a good job. Yellow Jacket fans that have made the trip from Atlanta, Georgia. Their team down 13 to 7. Just under 10 minutes remaining third quarter. Georgia Tech lines up with great field position. Their backup quarterback, Demarius Bilbo, who took over for A.J. Suggs, stays in. His second possession, Bilbo plants, throws deep, got a man out there. It's Bridges caught at the two-yard line. Bilbo to LaKeldrick Bridges, a gain of 37 yards. Again, Chris, I can't emphasize the, the arm strength, the importance of that arm strength by Bilbo. You're talking about a good athlete. Throws a deep ball extremely well. Had a chance there to, to, plant, his, to plant his feet, his foot, his feet, and throw the football back across the green. No, he planted his two feet, right, yeah, Coach? He planted both his feet and <laughs> got the ball. This is a little post corner. A good route. Yeah. Rich is the fastest fastest receiver on the football team did a nice job running around Michael Sampson trying to pound it in for the Jackets I don't think he made it second down coming up So a big flat pass play From Bilbo to Bridges and Chan Gailey airing it out That was a good call, a good, a good safe pace route that kept everybody in, kept everybody in, max protection, gave the quarterback plenty of time to plant his feet. Until yeah, he you saw uh, Chan Gailey saying timeout. Georgia Tech, a very important possession here, second down and one when we come back. Nine eleven to play, third quarter. Fresno State up thirteen to seven, but Georgia Tech with a second at goal from about one foot away. The Jackets trying to pound it in. Sampson and Fashi are in the backfield. Pretty simple here, run the quarterback sneak. They do. And let's see, is he in? Might be a loose football. Fresno State players indicating they might have it. 
That's why you run the quarterback sneak. You don't take a chance on handing the ball off. You, they, they, you should never miss a, miss a you know, fumble, the ball, fumble the ball in that situation. Jason Stewart energized in Fresno State. They're still grabbing and ripping at the bottom of the pile. What a huge play here. It's going to be second down. Third down, check that. So third down for Georgia Tech. Wow. A wet ball. He couldn't handle a snap from center on a, on a safe. A, usually at the safe play. The ball's on yep. the ground. Tech was very fortunate to recover that fumble. Again, Chris, I would run the quarterback sneak again in this situation. You got the ball on the six-inch line. You got a big, strong quarterback. They can take two shots at it here, Coach. They're going to take two runs, two quarterback sneaks. Sampson and Fossey, quarterback sneak. Touchdown. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. The Ramblin' Wreck in the end zone for the second time today. So Chan Gailey going with a percentage play. When you talk about someone adding to the offense, Demarius Bilbo starting the second half, and he has generated some excitement. That's a good move by Chan Gailey, Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator, Chan Gailey, the head coach. Uh, you know, your first team quarterback is having a bad a bad half. Yeah. Give the young youngster a chance, and you can tell he's he's a great athlete, going to be an outstanding football player. So George how he throws the ball. And the PAT coming up. Luke Manje. Once again, he hasn't missed one the entire season. 158 in a row, and he's made 159 in a row. The all-time record is held by Je Jeff Bixbert of Tennessee at 161. So Tech needs to score three more touchdowns and add the extra points for that man, Luke Mange. Tech's all-time leading scorer, and what a career he has had, Coach. He's had a great career, and I might add one thing. The, 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 bowl, the, the bowl games now count in the records. So yes. That's one reason he has as many as he, extra points as he does normally, and they're playing 13 games now, you know. So that uh, that helps uh, the modern-day first. This is the first year they've, uh, that the bowl records have counted. and 58 consecutive extra points. Everyone he's attempted at Georgia Tech. Let's go back for a moment to the big pass play, Coach. What set this up? The, the, the great thing about this is that they, they rolled the quarterback. They got him out of the pocket, gave him time to throw the football, and what a beautiful pass he threw down the field. And, a, again, a great route by the wide receiver. Came across the field and made the play. So we've got ourselves a ball game here as Chan Gailey talking to his highly recruited young quarterback, Demarius Bilbo, the redshirt freshman from Moss Point, Mississippi. Some great high school football players come out of Moss Point, Mississippi. That's right. And they are celebrating right now. Georgia Tech back on top, 14-13. So most of them stay down there and play for Jackie Sherrill of Mississippi State. The, uh, some outstanding high school football played in that state. So Bilbo numbers one of 237 yards. He also rushed uh, seven times and had the quarterback sneak. So a big kick by Monje and Jennings will take a knee. Don't forget, Capital One Bowl Week continuing. It never ends. 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. The Tennessee Volunteers, they've had kind of a disappointing season, but they'll take on the Maryland Terrapins in the 35th Annual Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl at the Georgia Dome. Then on ESPN2, the Air Force Falcons under Fisher DeBerry, the Virginia Tech Hokies, Frank Beamer. That's a, that's a special teams matchup, Coach. You can see that the inaugural Diamond Walnuts San Francisco Bowl. Two outstanding coaches, Fisher DeBerry at Air Force Academy, and, of course, Frank Beamer to Virginia Tech. From the 20, Rodney Davis, short game. So Fresno State starts with a running play, a gain of two for the talented Rodney Davis, Kieran Fox making the tackle. Big series here, I think, for Fresno State. You can sort of feel the momentum shifting back to Georgia Tech. Early in the year, uh, Pat Hill squad starting one and three, then finishing with a flourish, winning seven of its last nine games. They have not looked sharp, however, offensively today. Second and eight. Short pass, nice catch by Dr. Spock. 
Steven Spock with the hands, not the ears, the hands, and a nice little touch I, by I, Paul Pinnegan. I like that call. That's a good, safe pace, pass route. Get a nice touch uh, by the quarterback. Give, me, give him a chance to hit some of these, these short passes, Chris, and he gets yep. his confidence up. Oh, that's a beauty right over the linebacker. And Spock, who has good, good hands. Eric Henderson uh, trying to defend but could not. So a first down for Fresno State, 7.50 to play third quarter. And the handoff to Davis. Marcus are down. Going to be procedure against Fresno State. Fresno State shifting its offensive line with uh, the absence of Fitu Tua, who was the starter at left guard. So Victor Tefani shifting into that Price left guard. Snap. False start offense. Five yards, previous spot. Remains first down. That left guard position for Pat Hill. Did you prefer a big, heavy front line when you were a coach? A uh, big, heavy offensive line, or did you like your guys strong and quick? It, yeah, if you're going to run north and south, that's what you're looking for. Now, yeah. if, you, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to have some kind of an option attack, uh, or what we call a sprint draw attack, then you need some up, some linemen that can move up front. All right, first and 15 from the 28. Pinnegar, DeAndre Gilbert in the flat. Gilbert struggles and gets back to well, almost the line of scrimmage. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Chris Wilkes, Fargo Sun Bowl down in El Paso, Washington and Purdue, 24-17. Cody Pickett stripped by Gilbert Gardner, who will pick it up. The native of Angleton, Texas, scoring a touchdown in his home state. Purdue went up 34-17. Cody Pickett to Patrick Reddick for the second time today. Might be too little, too late. Huskies have drawn to within 10. That's an outstanding ball game there, Coach. Exciting offense, exciting plays, even turnovers look good. Draw play, Davis, and the Georgia Tech defense swarming now. Travis Parker, redshirt freshman from Hacienda, Hacienda Heights, California. A solid season, and he makes the big play there. They're going to force him to throw the football. They're not going to let the Fresno State have any success running the football. John Tenuta said at the start of the game, we're going to stop Rodney Davis, and right now they've shut him down. They've completely shut down Rodney Davis, and it'll be interesting to see if Fresno State can pass the ball. Particularly in the second half. Fresno State now, they're, again, in their nickel package. Matter of fact, they're playing six defensive backs now against this spread offense we're seeing. Third and 14, Pinnaker going up top, looking for DeAndre Gilbert. He's got it! DeAndre Gilbert complete! Gilbert down the sideline! And Gilbert inside the five! catch by the junior from Fresno, DeAndre Gilbert. 68-yard catch and run, coach. What can you say? This is a chance. This is just a, a, a great example of the, of the wide receiver being better than the defensive back. He just great hand-eye coordination, a well-thrown pass, but give the credit right there to, to Gilbert, number 87. Gilbert who we said would be the featured man with the absence of the great Mark Hay. Davis comes up with the biggest catch in his career. So Fresno State down by one. Right up the middle goes Davis, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. Davis from three yards out. Hot Rodney. He got those shoulder pads down low and just put it would not be denied. Put the ball in the end zone. So Fresno State responds. And Rodney Davis scores his eighth rushing touchdown this year. I go back, Chris. You don't get those big plays unless you go for them, unless you try them sometimes. That was just a great athletic ability right there by DeAndre Gilbert. You know, 5'10", 180-pound junior. Marvius Hester had tremendous coverage on that play, and he just couldn't come up with it. So now Fresno State, and they shift into their PAT mode. Once again, it's us in Osper 19-14, looking to make it 20-14. to Osper this year hasn't missed the PAT. And he makes another one. So a huge pass play. Henniger to DeAndre Gilbert. And Fresno State on top, 20-14. to Vote now on the Pontiac High Performance Play of the Year. This for the win for Florida State to upset Miami from 43 yards away. He missed it! Wide left! Here's 
Wallace pumping, looking, running to his right, looking, and he's going to be almost caught. Now he's running at the 25 and runs down the sideline, back to the 10. Now he's giving Brown, goes around to the 10, to the left side, to the 5. Touchdown! Crystal's going to throw for it. play of the game. Randall stops, throws it as far as he can. Count! Count! Touchdown! Last play of the game, and I don't believe it! Oh my goodness. Larry Johnson closing in on the magical number. Gets the toss. Johnson, here he goes! This is 2,000 plus for Larry Johnson! Touchdown, Penn State! And he does it with style! To vote, log on to ESPN.com. Keyword Pontiac. Tonight on Sports Center, are the Cowboys any closer to landing Parcell? Why baseball put Pete Rose on hold? A bowl bonanza, and can the Celtics regroup? Sports Center after the game on ESPN. Chris Marlowe, John Cooper, Tracy Wolfson from the Silicon Valley Football Classic. An explosion here in the third quarter as Fresno State has gone up 20 to 14, six minutes and six seconds remaining. A defensive struggle in the first half, but here in the third quarter, completely different. Asperuhoff kick, and it's coming down to Watkins at the five. And Watkins brings it back to the 19-yard line. Welcome back, everybody. Chris Marlowe and John Cooper, defensive struggle coach. But in the third quarter, I thought the insertion of Demarius Bilbo really kind of woke up Tech. It woke up Fresno State. It woke up the crowd. No question about it. We've seen both teams come out and pound, 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 and then suddenly in the second half, bombs away. Throw the ball down the field and let those wide receivers make big plays. Do you think we'll expect to see more of that, more throwing here in the second half? I think I think we'll see more wide open offense in the second half. Yeah, a little bit tough to run on the wet track here at Spartan Stadium. Normally a very reliable track, but muddy in the last five days of intermittent rain. Demarius Bilbo, he cranks it up long, looking for Bridges, incomplete. McKeldrick Bridges covered by D. Mesa. He threw that ball 55 yards in the air. He's, again, I keep emphasizing his arm strength. Bilbo can really crank it up. Remember, he was drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers as a pitcher, and he uncorks it, coach. On the 10 when he released it, opposite 38. Coach, you got the math that's on that? A, that's about, what, close to 50 yards, isn't it? Bilbo working out of the shotgun on second and 10. There he goes. And Bilbo turns the corner and gets a nice little gain, knocked out near the 32-yard line. Bryce McGill coming up to make the stop. McGill, five sacks this year. He started the season as the free safety and moved by Pat Hill to linebacker. Well, they're going to give him an 11-yard gain. That's how muddy it is down there. Tough to pick up the yard markers. They said we we're going to have rain here at the Silicon Valley Football Classic, but it hasn't happened. Been a pretty good football day. So first down for Georgia Tech. Bilbo, short drop, and Watkins makes the catch. Watkins, a senior from La Crosse, Louisiana, made the catch and had his knee on the ground, about a seven-yard gain. But boy, I like this quarterback. I like this young quarterback. You well, can see he's a great athlete and also can he can throw the football. What was your philosophy in changing quarterbacks during a game, coach? I didn't have a problem changing them. If my number one quarterback wasn't playing well, put, okay. put the other guy in the game, give him a chance. That's what you practice for. That's a great thing about college football. You had the quick hook, didn't you, coach? Aces Hemophy now lines up in the backfield with Bilbo, second and five. Fresno State. And they're coming, and down goes Bilbo. Jason Stewart and Claude Sanders, the nose tackle and left end, respectively, not faked out by that play. Jason Stewart, a good outside move, good call to us by the defense coordinator, Dan Brown. But you can see Jason Stewart come outside, would not let the quarterback get on the corner. I think that's a that's a smart defensive play. Don't keep him in the pocket. Don't let him get outside. Dan Brown, we had chatted with the Fresno State defensive coordinator. He said, yeah, we're ready for Bilbo. We know, we know what he can do. And that time, registering the second sack today. 
Now Channing defense, 20 to 14 here in the third quarter. Fresno State on top. Bilbo looking long all day. Fires cross field, pass caught, and it's going to be just a bit short of the first down. LaKeldrick Bridges, who is becoming a factor. No, it is going to be a first down. Look at the spot he gets. So Bridges gets a great spot, and Pat Hill jawing at that spot. I, I think Pat Hill's a little upset, Chris, because they were under, they were five, five under two deep zone. You shouldn't be able to throw it in the flat when you're playing rolled up coverage like that with your corners that rolled up. Yeah, you might be right. Just across the 40, line, 40 yard line, good enough for the first down. Good job of the official. Bilbo, short pass. A repeat of a play a minute or two ago and working down the sideline goes Kerry Watkins. Driving hard, tackle, hanging on, James Sanders. Watkins has broken Georgia Tech's single season record for most receptions with 70. Oh, Watkins, is he a gamer? How about that second effort? 21 yards. I tell you, the pass was complete for about seven yards. Carried the defensive back yeah. for another uh, 10, 12 yards. Went for the pony ride. Got this uh, Georgia Tech football team fired up. 3.43 to play, third quarter. Yellow Jackets are driving. Fresno State trying to call timeout. Let's see if they got it. They did. So a timeout called by the Fresno State defense. And Fresno State head coach uh, Pat Hill says, come on over. Five of the players not eligible to play today on defense. Top defensive lineman, one of their outstanding linebackers, top cover corner, and two reserves, coach. And that really takes it out of a defense in terms of, uh, of, of, of continuity. Chris, that's a total of 225 tackles. That, that you're losing today. 24 sacks, 24 tackles for loss, 11 sacks, and six fumble recoveries. Nick Burley, the great outside linebacker defensive end we talk about, had uh, 18 tackles for loss himself. So there's no question losing those players has hurt their defensive football team. But I can't say enough about the effort that uh, Fresno State's young players are giving on the defensive side of the ball. They're playing with a lot of heart. In case you just joined us uh, and you're wondering who's missing from this uh, Fresno State uh, ball club, David Adamo, an outside linebacker, Burley, an all-whack player, Mark K. Davis, all-whack player. Juan Diles is a backup cornerback. Demorio Renault, starting cornerback. Fitu Tua, starting left guard. And Sam Williams, an outstanding outside linebacker. So, unable to play today because of uh, academic problems, an academic snafu in, a, in, in the case of a couple of the players. But here we are. Fresno State still leads 20 to 14. Fake the inside handoff to Azemafi, and on the money once again is Bilbo. And the pass caught by Kerry Watkins. So pass caught by Watkins, tackled by Bryce McGill. Watkins Good now call. with 71 catches this year. I like that call. You had a little crossing pattern to get your quarterback outside, bring your slot back across the field. Good throw, good catch. Good first down. 15 yards on the play. And we may be seeing the emergence of uh, another great young quarterback in the country. Demarius Bilbo didn't start. Good time for the quarterback draw. There goes Bilbo banging his way, and he gets inside the 20. A.J. Suggs got the start through one touchdown pass and a couple of interceptions by East Satelli coming up. To make this stop. So Bilbo's uh, jersey so dirty, it looks like he did start, coach. You look like you've been playing the whole ball game, doesn't it? That's right. Wiping off the hands. Cool and chilly conditions. Uh, temperature in the low 50s now. It's California cool. 50 degrees in California is real cold, coach. Wouldn't you say that? California cool. Second and seven for Georgia Tech. Jackets down by six. Fresno State showing blitz. Here they come. Bilbo on the end around. Great. Jonathan Smith at the 20. Smith to the 10. And a first down inside the 10. What a call by Bill O'Brien. The end around. They caught 
The dogs in a blitz, a gain of 11. You get that defense running and chasing the football like the Bulldogs have been doing here all afternoon. A great call. You get them just going in one direction. You come back with a reverse play. You get a good block by your wide receiver. And you've got some good positive yards. First down goal on the eight-yard line. Two and a half minutes to play third quarter. There's a good look at Bill O'Brien. Last year coaching in the ACC. A holdover. Now Bilbo being rushed. Throws! Got a man! And it's intercepted! Demarius Bilbo waited a second too long. Bryce McGill coming up with the interception. Bryce McGill. Bryce McGill is a former defensive back. They moved the outside linebacker. You're not going to fool him on a play like that. Outstanding play by number five, Bryce McGill. Bilbo just took way too long to get rid of this ball. He had a receiver who was open deep. Now, this was a throwback. This was a design play where you sprint out to your right and throw. See, so he didn't find his feet. you got to set your feet and get, get some velocity on the ball. Go back across the green. That, uh, you take a lot of chances when you're down on the eight-yard line with a play like that. Pass was intended for Asa Zemefi, the fourth Georgia Tech turnover. Bruce Gator didn't like that one. So Fresno State opens on its one-foot line, and uh, Coach John Cooper's favorite play, the quarterback sneak, <laughs> gets the Bulldogs out to the four-yard line. I just don't want to turn it over, Chris. Don't you know, turn it over. You know, when you play a young quarterback coach, you take the good with the bad, don't you? You got to I mean, take the good with the bad. There's some reason why he hadn't been playing. Okay. Fresno State uh, historically has been one of the leading teams in the nation in terms of interceptions. 66. Boy, Ole Miss with 94. That'll get a ton. You're going to see about nine people up on the line here now. Stopping the running game. John Tenuta is going to try to make the other team beat him throwing the football. Penninger rifles one and moving up very close to a first down. DeAndre Gilbert, the man that made the big reception leading to the go ahead touchdown. So Fresno State's got a third down coming up here, trying to work its way out. Pat Hill's team leading 20 to 14, just under a minute 30 left, third quarter. Got a decision to make here now. You're going to get the ball to Davis, you're going to run the ball inside, or you're going to throw the little, the little short pass to your wide receiver? I say run the quarterback sneak, coach. No, no, you got too far to go for a quarterback sneak. Well, you're going to give the ball to Davis. Nope. Vinegar looking. Pass. Throws incomplete. Gilbert, the intended receiver. Oh. Pass broken up by Jonathan Cox. I don't know about that call. I think I would have run the ball. Quarterback Rodney sneak, Davis. coach. Rodney Davis in the backfield. I'm going to run the ball in that situation. So the dogs will have to kick it away in Georgia Tech, which put together a great drive, only to turn it over for the fourth time today. Chris, I'm going to say this. It's a lot easier to make those calls up here in the That's press right, box coach. than it is down on that sideline. You're like 100% up here, Coach. 100% on calls. So Jason Simpson will kick it away, and Jonathan Smith is deep. Georgia Tech should get great field position here. Let's see if Tech tries to block it. Low punt, angling right side. Smith definitely returnable. And Smith gets to the 42-yard line. Loose ball. Let's see. We're going to say that ball is down. Nate Ray making the tackle. Wednesday, Capital Bowl Week concludes on ESPN. 9.30 Eastern, Chris Lee and Kirk. They will break down all of the day's bowl games on a special edition of College Game Day presented by Discover Card. Then at 11 a.m., John Navarre in Michigan going up against Rex Grossman and the Florida Gators. And that should be a good day of football. Boy, what great games we have had. Capital One Bowl Week. So Georgia Tech with outstanding field position. They'll work. From the Fresno State 42, Bilbo can run it. He lofts one, got a man wide open! Touchdown! The Ramblin' Wreck! 42 yards, Bilbo to Jonathan Smith. Yeah, oh, there's a flag down. I think the touchdown is going to stand, however. 
Flag in the end zone, and the officials will talk it over. I can't say enough about the arm strength of this young quarterback. I wonder why he hasn't been playing any more than he has this year. Maybe he's played more than I think he has. You know, you know what, Coach? The score, unsportsmanlike conduct against the scoring team. 15 yards on the try. We'll try that with extra point now. All right, that could be a key. Now, remember, the Georgia Tech kicker has never missed a point after in his career. So now he's going to be backed up for the 159th of his career. You don't like to see those penalties, Todd. It's a celebration penalty. You see that quite often in college football, but it really shouldn't affect the, this, this extra point. Well, it backs right him up. Right in the middle of the field, it's a 35-yarder now. And right, right in the middle of the field, I think he'll make it. Monjay has never missed in four years. Look out for the blocker, though. Look out for Washington jumping on top. Kick on the way. He got it. He remains perfect. Luke Monjay, a 35-yard extra point. So Monjay just two extra points away from the all-time NCAA record of 161. So Georgia Tech strikes back, and Demarius Bilbo has been the man. He's a man. He's a go-to man. Again, a good call. Get him outside the pocket. He's going to roll a little bit to his right, get outside the pressure, throws the ball on the run, and throws a bullet. George, coach, before the game, you were telling me that the that the team that travels the farthest has had uh, had some good success in Capital One Bowl week. Run it down for me. Let's see if I can find it here, but I've got it somewhere. The teams that travel around the country, I know Tulane had to go all the way over to Hawaii. That's right. You would think that the team uh, that travels the shortest they would have the advantage, but apparently not. As Coach Cooper looks for that. Come back to me here. In a all right, I'll, I'll get, get you in a second, then, Coach. Demarius Bilbo, six of nine, throwing a touchdown on INT. He's run for 25 yards and a touchdown, and he has got it going. A rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. Fans are energized. 21-20, the Yellow Jackets lead it. Getting back to your question, uh, Wake Forest had to travel all the way out to Seattle to play in the Seattle Bowl and beat Oregon. Tulane went over to the ConAgra Bowl in Hawaii and won the ball game. We'll come back to it in a minute. All right. Jennings at the one. Jennings got a lane outside. Can he get a block? He gets one from D. Mesa. Jennings all the way up near the 40-yard line, and things are starting to get testy now. we got players uh, firing on the sideline. Luke Monjay making the tackle. Your, your kicker shouldn't have to make the tackle after he kicks the ball that effectively. Getting back to this bowl situation, though, Wisconsin went down to uh, San Antonio and won the Alamo Bowl over Colorado. Kansas State traveled out to, to uh, uh, San Diego and won the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl over Arizona State. Uh, Pittsburgh traveled all the way across the country and put a good whipping on, on Oregon State, 38-13. to 13. And Texas Tech went, went back to uh, Orlando and beat uh, Clemson. How do you account for that, Coach? His team traveled a long way to win the bowl games. Rodney Davis with the carry. And Davis takes it up to the 44-yard line. Ball came out, but the linesman saying he was down. So both teams energized by some offensive production, Coach, and, and the defenses now know they have to put in some uh, some good plays here and make some stops. I tell you, this this is a great thing about college football. Bowl week has been very exciting. There's been some great games played all throughout the country, some close games, some exciting games. And both these teams now are laying on the line. Time running out in the third quarter. And that will do it. The Silicon Valley Football Classic will continue. It was 13 to 7 at the half. Both teams have exploded. We head to the fourth quarter. The Jackets 21, the Dogs 20. 21 points scored in the third quarter by both teams. We welcome you back to the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Chris Marlowe, John Cooper, and Tracy Wolfson. Fresno State has the ball. They will start from their 44. Bryson Sumlin is in. And Sumlin hit hard and driven back. So Bryson Sumlin replacing Rodney Davis for a moment. Eric Henderson coming up to make the tackle. 13-7 at the half. Fresno State 
had the lead, but the assertion of Demarius Bilbo really paying dividends for Georgia Tech. Now I'm going to turn this right around. If I'm a Fresno State, I think you've got to throw the football. I would put the ball in the hands of my redshirt, my uh, freshman quarterback, redshirt freshman quarterback, Paul Penny. I think he's a better quarterback than we've seen so far today. I think you'll see him throw the football better in the fourth quarter. Third and five from the 45. Jennings comes in motion. Pinniger right in the back of Jennings. I believe the pass was intended for Jamison, but Pinniger off the mark that time. Our ESPN game tracker. Well, now it's a game of big plays. DeAndre Gilbert in the third quarter. What a catch, coach. As he took it down the sideline, that set up the touchdown. Great individual effort. And speaking of individual effort, Demarius Bilbo spotting his wide receiver, Jonathan Smith. And coming right back. Smith has played all over. He played running back. He played the wide receiver. Made some big plays. So Fresno State forced to punt as the sun peeks out here in San Jose, California. Glad you're with us here on ESPN2. Low floater down the middle. It bounces. I don't believe it was touched. And it takes a Fresno State bounce. And all the way down to the 11-yard line. We would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to the wives, husbands, and children who are serving along their military loved ones at Commander Fleet Activities in Yokosuka, Japan. They're watching today's Silicon Valley Football Classic and around the world in 180 countries and aboard ships at sea on Armed Forces Network. Thank you for your sacrifices. We really appreciate what you're doing for us. It's America, it's college football, and we're having a great day. Georgia Tech and Fresno State. Demarius Bilbo on Corks one. If you just joined us, these are two teams that would never play each other in any other kind of circumstance, Coach. The first meeting ever in football. I'm told they played a couple years ago in women's basketball and a couple years earlier in men's basketball, but it's kind of an intriguing matchup. The great great thing about the bowl system, you get these kind of matchups. You wouldn't obviously you wouldn't get this matchup during the season, during the conference season. Uh, Tech would play most of their games, uh, you know, back in that part of the country. This, this is a good matchup, a good opportunity for Fresno State. Total yards, Georgia Tech stepping up their production here in the second half with Demarius Bilbo. Aces Zemefi and Bilbo going to sprint out. This looks like a great option. He throws a floater and it's intercepted by Cameron Worrell. Cameron Worrell, the senior from Chowchilla, California. Oh, wow. Performer and the dogs are going to have it. Kerry Watkins, the intended receiver. That's a chance you take when you play a young quarterback in a situation like that. He may make some great plays, but he also you got to live with the mistakes that you're going to get. So Bilbo doing it all for Coach Chad Gailey. Five turnovers now for the Jackets. Bilbo's got an interception. Again, they're getting Bilbo outside, throwing the football down the field, and just a nice play by the free safety. That Bilbo a little frustration after the play, Coach. I think you'll see, yes, he, he was frustrated. I think, I think that was an ill advised play. He was either frustrated or wasn't looking where he was going, Coach. One of the two. I think he was maybe a little bit of both. Loose ball. And the dogs jump on it. So the wet turf and the muddy conditions starting to take its uh, toll. And uh, they are talking to the kid on the sidelines. Demarius Bilbo. Good chance for Fresno State to regain the momentum, line up, come off that football, go north and south. You're in four down territory. Give the ball to your best running back, Rodney Davis. Pat Hill. And now his Bulldogs will put Rodney Davis back into the game. 21 20, Georgia Tech. Straight handoff, Davis right up the middle. And he is gang tackled. They still can't get him down. Finally, they do. Eric Henderson riding the doggy there. And you turn that right over. John Tenuta is not going. He's going to bring enough people up on the line of scrimmage. He's probably going to force uh, Paul Penninger to have to throw the football. Davis's numbers uh, good. He started out like a house of fire in the first quarter. He had 52 yards in the first quarter. The other thing you could do right here, Chris, is take the attitude. You're going to take two downs to get a first down. You got third and four, or third and a long three. You can 
run the ball on this down and then come back if you don't make it and, 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 and take a chance on getting it on fourth down. Keep in mind, Fresno State has an outstanding field goal kicker if needed. Looks like a passing formation with Steven Spock. Blitz coming. Pinnaker throws on the money. Hit. Loose football. Let's see if they call that a completion. They do. Georgia Tech ball. And we got a marker down. Jermaine Jamison made the initial catch. And let's see. The officials will chat it up. Did Jamison have possession? Is that what you're talking about, Coach? That's why I think we need instant replay in college football. I'm not sure he had possession on that on that on that, on that pass. That's a that's a key call of the ball game. Had it for a moment. Ball dislodged. After the play, personal foul against Fresno State, and yes, it is going to be Georgia Tech ball, so no question there. And the officials said. The ball was a well-thrown ball, and they had the first down. Fender put it right on the money. That's a great stick there. That's a good stick, but I'm not sure he had possession of the football. That's a, that's a questionable call. Number 22, James Butler he stuck his head in there. One oh, he's got it, Coach. Does he think he has it? I think so. He's got it. I, if I had a red flag, I might throw it on that play. <laughs> <laughs> I might get overruled, but I'd, I'd at least chance it. All right. We go back the other way. We've got a marker down in the backfield. And it's going to be against Georgia Tech, apparently. Kerry Watkins made the catch. D. Mesa on the coverage. Usually when the referee makes that call, Chris, it's a holding, holding penalty. First year back in the college game for Chan Gailey. You know, Chan Gailey was a one-time quarterback at Florida coach, and you know who he backed up? Steve Spurrier. Steve Spurrier. That's He's right. a three-year letterman in Florida. Got an outstanding <laughs> coaching career. You know, he won the national championship way back in 1984 at Troy State, running the wishbone offense. He uh, coached at, uh, also at Sanford University and in professional football, Denver Broncos, Dallas Cowboys, head coach for the Dallas yep. Cowboys, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, Miami Dolphins. 21 to 20 is our score. 12 minutes and nine seconds to play in the game. Quarterback draw coming up. Georgia Tech. On the screen. You like that quarterback draw, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Keep the ball in your quarterback's hands. Your second favorite play. They can, they can go with Fires a rocket right side over the intended receiver, Jonathan Smith. So you can see the promise, the upside, and the potential of Demarius Bilbo. He's not a finished product yet. He's not the Mona Lisa. He's, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's like a John Cooper note card. You can't really, you're not sure what's on it. You know there's some good stuff there, but it's not quite complete yet. Every pass he's thrown is down the field. I mean, it's a it's a, yeah. a 20, 30 yard pass down the field. We don't see the percentage passes. A little dump off to the back, or a little tight end uh, choice route or anything like that. Second and 20. Bilbo. And that's a play that hasn't been all that effective for Bilbo. Jason Stewart and Guy McIntyre, the right side of the Fresno defensive front. No gain on that play. That play was designed to go outside. I think Bilbo uh, used uh, some bad judgment tried to take the ball inside. Outside, Bilbo should have kept the ball outside. The, the, the linemen are blocking down. And he ran the ball back inside. That's the mistake that a young quarterback or a young uh, running back will make sometimes. Third and 21. The Fresno Bulldog fans up and screaming. Bilbo from the shotgun. Quarterback draw. There he goes, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 40. Hard hit. Bringing him out of bounds, Bryce McGill, a gain of 10. I like that call, though. I like that call. It's a good, safe play. You pick up about 15 yards. You put yourself in pretty good field position. Got a good kicking game. So kick it away, Coach. Kick it away. Absolutely. Kick it away. Fourth and fourth and 11. Kick it away. Dan Dyke on the punt. 
Adam Jennings retreats inside his 20. The Bulldogs are good at blocking kicks. They've blocked uh, six kicks, I believe, so far this year. So one of the best kicks will come with pressure. Yeah, absolutely, Coach. Here they come. Dyke a low roller down the middle. Poor punt, but he gets a great bounce. And it rolls out of bounds near the 23-yard line. Fourth quarter here in San Jose. Georgia Tech leading Fresno State 21-20. Georgia Tech playing in the state of California for the first time in 33 years. And uh, offensive coordinator Frank Signetti for Fresno State. What can he cook up now? His team trailing 21 to 20. Jermaine Jamison and a short game. Let's check in with Reese. What's happening, Reese? All right, they are finished in El Paso, guys. Wells Fargo Sun Bowl, Purdue, a 10-point winner over Washington. Big day for Kyle Orton, 283 yards, couple of touchdowns. And look at the Big Ten, maligned through much of the regular season, off to a 3-0 start in the bowl season. Big Ten playing well, Coach. Pac-10 suffering uh, some defeats that they're not used to. Big Ten playing well so far. Two big ball games, Iowa and Ohio State, uh, left to be played. There you go. Iowa, of course, uh, going up against USC, Ohio State, Miami. Pinnegar unloads one deep. Jamison caught. Caught at the 45-yard line by Jermaine Jamison. And Houston never looked back for the football. Ruben Houston, the, the corner. This is zone coverage. Zone, you always keep your eye on the football and play the ball when it's in the air. You can see he never looks back for the ball. And a good job adjusting to the football by Jamison to make the catch. Houston, a youngster. He was a 1,400-yard rusher in high school being converted to cornerback. And Pinnaker gets off a blast to his pal Jamison. Two freshmen doing it here in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. 37 yards on the play. First down, Fresno State. Hand the ball to Rodney Davis. And Davis working on the right side behind Dardagon Shaq and Joe Shy. They say Dardagon Shaq is, is like a Hulk Hogan type character in the weight room in terms of pump and iron coach. I don't know if that big offensive line is getting tired or what, though, Chris, but they're not coming off as much as, as fast now. They're not getting the movement now that they got early in the ballgame. Big guys, five of them over 300 pounds. Playing on a wet track against the smaller, quicker linemen. They gotta be puffing and puffing a little bit. They go hog mollies up front, I call them. Spock and Davis flank Pinnegar on second and eight. Pinnegar rushed and dragged down. Travis Parker with the sack. Reese, come again. Well, Washington and Purdue, a couple of teams well positioned for next season. Purdue getting the victory over the Huskies by 10. The Big Ten still perfect in bowl games. They have four more to go. Kyle Orton was outstanding, 25 of 37, 283. The Boilers finish with a victory. Georgia Tech gets its first sack of the day, the 30th this year. John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator, bringing the heat. Third and 17 now. 21-20, Georgia Tech leads Fresno State. Eight and a half minutes to go, fourth quarter. Pinnaker with time, steps up, he's got a running lane. Paul Pinnaker, he's got the first down and he slides inside the 30. So Paul Pinnaker, no one open and Pinnaker takes off for 23. This is what I like about having an athletic quarterback and all those receivers are covered as they were. That's a chance you take when you're playing man coverage underneath also. You see it open up. Penninger wisely takes the football and runs for a first down. Great field position now by the, for, the, for the Bulldogs. And an exasperating escape for that man, Chan Gailey. So the dogs set up at the Georgia Tech 28 first down. And once again, it's Rodney Davis. And Davis cranks for about seven. Coach, you said Rodney Davis would carry the ball about 25 times today. Let's check the numbers. He's got 28 carries, and that's his 29th. So yeah, he can't actually had the ball 20 times in the first half. Not all bad. I'd give it to him three times in a row here. And a field goal is not bad here. You're down 21 to 20, so, you know, field position is very important. Frank Signetti knows he can rely on Rodney Davis, the junior college transfer from Fresno City College, who's had an outstanding year. They credited Davis with five. Here he goes again. Davis 
hole wasn't open, and he gets about four. Going to be short of the first down and a third down coming up. Talking about Frank Sinet, he comes from a football family, has a brother, coaches at North Carolina State. His dad's an outstanding football coach at Indiana, uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, Indiana, Purdue, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So third and a very long yard, maybe two. Third and two for Fresno State. Big down here. Fresno State today, 7 of 19 on third down. Rodney Davis driving, and he is very, very close. I think he got the first down. He's going to get a good spot. I, I believe he picked up enough yards to get the first down. Let's see, he had to get to the 18 and about the 18 and a half. Yeah, it looks like he's got it, doesn't it, Coach? Uh, got a first down by foot. There you go. Got a first down by foot. I don't think there's any question for the way it looks up in the press box that he's got a first down. They don't even measure. They gave him the first down. Coach, let me straighten one thing out. Frank Signetti, senior, Indiana University in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. We both had it wrong. He was the dad, that's the son. The son has his Bulldogs driving, and they're giving uh, Georgia Tech a steady dose of Rodney Davis as Davis runs for four more yards. Davis, a junior, he'll be back next year. His brother Marquet, unable to play today, ruled ineligible to play in this game. One of the seven. Marquet, I'm sure, watching today, had an outstanding year. 32 rushes, 121 yards for Rodney Davis. I think you'll see Rodney Davis carry the ball again, but don't be surprised to see a play-action pass. Good time to fake the ball to Davis and throw the ball down the field. Approaching five and a half minutes remaining in the game. Georgia Tech leading by one. Second and seven. Uh-oh, mix up. Davis in the backfield, and he is tackled immediately. So a busted play, and third down coming up. It's a bad play. You don't need that to happen to you. Wimbush up to make the stop. I Losing. think uh, it looked to me like Paul Penninger probably audibleized at the line of scrimmage, and Rodney Davis didn't get the check. Quarterback turned one way, and the running back went the other way. Third and ten now. Keep your eye on number 49 on tape. Stephen Spock, the blocking back, sometimes he will sneak out of the backfield and line up. What you don't need here is a turnover. I'd run a good, safe play, put the ball in the middle of the field, think field goal. Third and ten. You got a motion penalty. Hand off Davis. And Davis is going to be close to the first down, but it's going to be a penalty against Fresno State. So a legal motion against the dogs. Bringing a wide receiver in motion, Chris, and then your fullback spot moves, so you've got two people in motion moving before the ball snap. Five-yard penalty in college football. There's a good look at Spock. He's, he's had eight catches this year and caught three touchdowns. So they like to use him. They could sneak him out. Signetti going, oh, no. What happened there? Again, I, I think you'll see Fresno State run the football. A good safe call. Run the football and give your, your great field goal kicker a chance to, to give you the lead. So Rodney Davis flanks Paul Pendergar. Third and 15. Quarterback draw. Delay to Davis. Up the middle he goes. And they're set up perfectly for the field goal attempt. Kieran Fox coming up. The junior out of Atlanta after a gain of seven. So a son, Asperuhoff, comes on. Asperuhoff today, he's got two makes from 22 and 42, and he's missed from 33. This is going to be another 33-yarder. He missed this first one from 33. Can he give Fresno State the lead? Snap on a bounce. Asperuhoff, chip shot. He got it. Good hold, good kick. A nice correction by Jason Simpson. 
And the kid from Bulgaria who grew up as a soccer brat knocks it through. Asen Asparuhov. We're going down to the final minutes, folks. Stay with us. 3.43 to play. Fresno State leads 23-21. Fresno State led at the half 13 to 7 at the end of three it was 21 20 Georgia Tech now Fresno State back on top 23 21 and it's a tough track to work on today coach John Cooper Chris, and you, you got a, if you're the head coach you got a real tough decision to make right now if you're Chan Gailey do you stick with a young quarterback or do you go back to Suggs you got three 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 minutes and 45 seconds left almost have to, to score on this drive what do you do coach I stick with first guess you stick with the billboard okay we'll see but I let him run the ball more I'm gonna run a few quarterback draws and get, get him outside on the corner with the football as for pumped up he just kicked the go-ahead field goal and the ball through the end zone the jackets will have the ball at their 20. so the kicker from Plovdiv Bulgaria Rips the kickoff and Demarius Bilbo walking a little bit more slowly. Had some bounce to his step early on. And he's chatted up with the coaches. Again, you got to keep in mind a field goal here will win the football game for you. All right, we're going to step aside for a moment. Stay with us. We're going right down the wire. Fresno State and Georgia Tech. 3.38 to play. Fresno State up 23-21. Pressure on that. Freshman, Demarius Bilbo, the kid from Moss Point, Mississippi. His team trails, and now he's being asked to lead Georgia Tech to victory. Fresno State with the big rush, and they punished the kid. Dell Hawkins was there. Jason Stewart with the hit. You roll your quarterback outside to try to get him away from pressure. you got to protect his backside. You can't let him, let him get hit in the back like this. Good job of backside pursuit. Bilbo's numbers, 6 of 12, 131 yards. He's thrown for a touchdown. He's got two interceptions. He's run for a touchdown. He's done just a, a little of everything, Coach. He, 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 you can tell he's an extremely gifted athlete. Ace is a good football coach. Ace is Zemafi in the backfield. The Jackets have virtually abandoned their running game. Looks like the end around coming up. Here's Jonathan Smith in Fresno State has it well read. Coming up, playing a great game is Jason Stewart, assisted by Cameron Worrell. A four-yard game. This play looked like he this play looked like he was going to gain a lot more yards. But unfortunately, I think the field uh, really helped Fresno State in that situation. It looked to me like the ball carrier had a lot more room to run, but he couldn't gain his foot his his, his, his uh, footing on the outside. Clock continues to run. Three minutes to play in the game. A big third and six now for Georgia Tech. Maybe the biggest play in the ball game. Bilbo with some time. Now he's in trouble. He throws one long. And Bridges looking for the flag. No, incomplete. Bridges had beaten Worrell earlier in the game. Not that time. Pass overthrown. Good no call. You can't call holding on that play. A good no call by the official. So the punting unit comes on for Georgia Tech, or at least an apparent punt. We're told by both these coaches that they had some trick plays. Would this be a time to pull one out, Coach? No, you got no. two timeouts left. I think I think you punt the football, but you gotta you gotta keep Fresno State from getting a first down, or the game's gonna be over. Low punt, flag down, and it squishes to a stop at the 34-yard line. So let's check the marker. A 42-yard punt. And the officials will talk it over. Georgia Tech won its bowl game last year, defeating Stanford in the Seattle Bowl. Fresno State and Pat Hill, they haven't won a bowl game of the four consecutive. They've lost three in a row. They've lost three in a row. They're all close ball game. You had a close ball game down here last year, then two years ago they had a close ball game with the Air Force. Maybe running out of gas is Raymond Washington. The redshirt freshman from Long Beach, he's Gimpy, filling in for Demorio Renault today. And the officials, what are they talking about, Coach? This what do you think? Be an interesting call. Him. Uh, Fresno State might have had too many people on the field. I'm not sure. Usually, when the when the uh, back judge throws a flag like that, that's usually the call. So a little bit of confusion looks like among the officials. Keep in mind, it was fourth and six 
If the coach is right, let's see how the officials sort it out. That's a that's a 15-yard penalty in college football if the if the 12th man participated in the play. Apparently the the referee microphone is not working. Fresno State uh, player at the top of the screen, coach. Looks like he got off. It looked like he got off the field. That would only be a five-yard penalty because he did not participate in the play. Well, if it's a five-yard penalty, it would not be a first down. Then you'd be faced with a fourth and one. And I'd go for it. Any more than that. I would go for it. Oh, you're a gambler. You got, you got, no, you got to go for it. You are a gambler, Two and a half minutes left to go in the game. you got two timeouts, but... So we got a fourth and one here. What a decision for Chan Gailey <laughs> Chan and Gailey. offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien. Chan has already made the decision. The offensive team's on the field. They're going to go for it. Now, what play do you call? 2.33 to play. Chan Gailey going to roll the dice right here. A fourth and one at his 29. And Raymond Washington, the player we told you about a moment ago, and the trainers will come out and attend to him. We're going to step aside while they attend to Ray Washington. Don't go away. Capital Bowl week continuing here in San Jose. Be back in a minute. Just over two and a half minutes to play. Fresno State up by a couple on Georgia Tech. It's a fourth and one at the 29. Chan Gailey deciding to go for it. But the question is, what does Bill O'Brien, the youngest offensive coordinator for Tech, call? I'll tell you what he calls. He tells the head coach, you make the call. You're the head coach. You make a lot more money than I am. You call. Biggest play of the game. Bilbo, short pass, incomplete! Intended for LeKeldrick Bridges. The pass underthrown by Demarius Bilbo. So Fresno State will take over. Just a badly thrown pass. The wide receiver looked like he was open, had enough uh, room to catch the ball and make the first down, but the ball slipped out of the quarterback's hands. That's a chance you take throwing the football with a wet ball. Or a muddy ball, I should say. So Chan Gailey discussing it with his talented freshman quarterback. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Would there be another chance for Bill Ball? Let's see. You run the ball, keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock going. Rodney Davis, you got to stop Rodney oh, Davis. There he down. goes. Rodney Davis to the house. Touchdown. And he flips the ball into the stands. To a Bulldog fan, 28 yards right up the gut. You got to call a penalty. I thought I'd say, that's a penalty in college football. You can't <laughs> throw the ball in the stands. Rodney Davis and maybe the Georgia Tech squad disheartened by the, the fourth and one coach, and that just opened up beautifully for Davis. Well, that happens sometimes when you're crowding the line of scrimmage and trying to stop the short yardage running play. Once they pop the line of scrimmage because your defensive backs are so close to the line of scrimmage, the back just has daylight, has open, open space to run for the touchdown. Extra point going to be uh, important here, Coach. The lead is eight. If you can get to nine, you make it a, a, a two-possession game. Good if you point. miss the extra point, Georgia Tech would get it back, and Chan Gailey's squad would have one more one more try. At it. Good, good point, but I, I don't think distance will be a problem. Uh, accuracy might. Uh, this is a, what, 35-yard field goal? Well, Coach, just like your golf game, accuracy is always the key, isn't it? A accuracy is the key, and my golf game isn't very good, so <laughs> you bring up a good point. <laughs> So a 35-yard extra point for Asen Asparuhoff. And he is Nectar right down the middle. And the Bulldogs go up 30 to 21. And Pat Hill's team on its way to its first bowl victory since 1992. And there's the man, Rodney Davis. Big offensive line did a nice job 
on the touchdown run by Rodney Davis. Once he got in the open field, he was not going to beat him now. What's the line? Come off the ball. Great block by the right guard and the right tackle. They've been doing it all afternoon. Rodney Davis scores here, Reese. Uh, let's check in with you. And if that's the final nail in the coffin against Georgia Tech, this might have done it for Colorado State. TCU's Ricky Madison plowing in from the two, and that Horn Frog defense has been everything it's advertised to be. 17-3, late in the fourth of the Axel Liberty Bowl. Reese Davis carrying the ball in the studio. Rodney Davis carrying the ball out here in San Jose. 35 rushes, 152 yards, and two touchdowns. Has he been the most valuable player in the game? Uh, yes, he has. Okay. He's been the most valuable player. He, he would get my vote. Chan Gailey still teaching. What a nice fellow and a very fine football coach. You know what I think happened? I, I think they gave him the option to run the football or, 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 or check with me type offense, either run the ball or throw the ball. In that particular situation, I think he should have run the ball. I think that's what Chan Gailey's talking to his quarterback about. Well, the Jackets really getting away from any kind of running game to the running backs. Aces Hemothy, who looked impressive early, has not carried the ball here in the second half. Masparuha belts another one into the end zone. And taking a knee. Why not bring it out there, Coach? Why not, why not bring it out and take a chance? You burn 10 seconds, but hey, you break a big one, you're right good, back in the game. Good point. You need, you need a big play. Yeah, As a matter of so, fact, you, you need two scores. Don't forget, on Wednesday, Capital Bowl week is going to conclude. Number 20, Florida takes on number 11, Michigan, in the Outback Bowl. John Navarre, the Michigan Wolverines, they are going to be good. Can they take down Rex Grossman and the Gators in the Outback Bowl? To log on to ESPN.com, and there is Rodney Davis. Brother Marquet could not play today, but uh, Rodney doing his share to keep up the family tradition. Demarius Bilbo on porch one bridge is wide open. He's got it at the 34-yard line, so the Texters are not dead yet. Demarius Bilbo to LaKeldrick Bridges, and you have to like the potential of this pack, this uh, pass-throwing and catching combination. I have not seen a better arm in college football this year than I've seen in, from, from Bilbo. He threw that ball 60 yards. And Bridges just running away from the defense. 4.4 speed. Freshman from Dallas, Texas. So Georgia Tech with Bilbo out of the shotgun. Got him He's got a man. Again. He got him open. Pass under thrown, and it's intercepted by Mesa. So Bilbo under throwing his wide receiver on the far side. He had a man, and for a split second, there was some separation there. The sixth Georgia Tech turnover today. Well, obviously, you don't turn the ball over that many times to expect to win the game, but he was open. He was behind Mesa. Mesa either, either gives up a big play or makes a big play. D. Mesa, the junior from Santa Ana, having a day. Yeah. He's beat all the he way. Runs, he runs by him. He's open. To, the safety, safety had over top coverage, but uh, that ball could have very easily been completed. Demarius Bilbo's third interception, so he's done some outstanding things. He's had some picks, he's made some mistakes, but you see the potential is there. And a lot of, a lot of stuff to work with if you're the offensive coordinator and the head coach for Georgia Tech. Demarius here, Bilbo. Here, obviously, you run the ball. You, you make Georgia Tech use all their timeouts. The clock is your, is your ally now, so you, you don't take any chances to turn the ball over. Well, the Western Athletic Conference has to have a little smile on its face now. Boise State, a big winner today over Iowa State, and it looks like Fresno State is going to win its bowl game, so two out of three on the ESPN bowl game tracker. Good point. 66%, not bad. The only conference that's better than that is the old Big Ten Conference, you know, the conference that I coached in for the last 13 years, or 13 years, not the last 13 years. We got four big uh, Big Ten games left. Michigan, Iowa, Ohio State, and Penn State all left here. D. Mesa doing a little flex job. He wasn't flexing when he was beaten badly early in the first quarter. But Pat Hill's team has hung in there despite the seven players unable to participate. He said, we will have players step up. We will play hard. We will be focused. And, and they have been. He, he, he's exactly right. I've, I've seen several games for Fresno State games. With, and Pat Hill, always, his teams always play hard. 
can always give you great effort. I, uh, he, he's done an outstanding job at Fresno State. And of course, if you know Pat Hill, his motto, will play anybody, anywhere, anytime. Take a look at his schedule next year. He opens at Tennessee, Oregon State at home, at Oklahoma, at Colorado State, the non-conference schedule. It's okay to play those teams, but you've got to win those games. You've got to win some of them. So Pat Hill not afraid to line it up with the big guys. I was asking about that. He said, you know why I do it? Because in the 70s, Florida State emerged as a national power. In the 80s, it was Miami. In the 90s, it was Virginia Tech. But we think we can be the, the team of the 2000s. You know, he's got good football in the San Joaquin Valley. If he can keep those players at home, a little bit like Miami. Miami keeps those players at home down there in South Florida. They got a chance to play anybody in the country. And, uh, the thing I like about Pat Hill, I've seen his teams practice, so they, they do a good job of fundamental football. They go back to fundamentals and really teach blocking and tackling. So Fresno State with a minute 52, a second and seven. They're going to hand the ball to Rodney Davis. And he is tripped up right away. Georgia Tech calls timeout. The tackle made by Ricardo Wimbush. Our Capital One player of the game. And it's the slow getting up Rodney Davis. 152 rushing yards, a couple of touchdowns, and he really set the tone early, didn't he, Coach? He's, he set the tone earlier, and he's had over 150 yards rushing, 152 yards rushing today, so he's he's over 1,500 yards, Chris, for the year, so he gets my vote for player of the game. Coming off his best effort ever, he had 221 yards about a month ago against Louisiana Tech in similar conditions, so Rodney Davis has shown that he can play in, in uh, tough difficult uh, climate conditions and he did this against a good defensive football team make no mistake Georgia Tech is a well coached defensive team John Tenuta does a great job and they've done a great job so far this year stopping the running game they they held Virginia and North Carolina State to under 100 yards rushing so the Fresno State Bulldogs are going to improve their record to nine and five they opened up by losing at Wisconsin a game they could have won then uh, they played at number 15, Oregon, lost 28-24, blown out by Oregon State in the midst of a quarterback change. Then they started to get together. They inserted Pinnegar at Rice. Number 22, Colorado State, got on a roll, won seven of their last nine. They had a stumble against a very fine Boise State team, but I don't think there's any team in them. You put Miami and send them up to the blue turf, and they're going down against Boise State. <laughs> I think even they would have trouble. And once again, it's Rodney Davis. Coach, if we don't have time, your your thoughts quickly on Miami and Ohio State. Well, first of all, I think it'd be a great game. Ohio State is undefeated, 13-0. If Maurice Claret is healthy and Ohio State can run the football, they're going to force Miami to play more than a seven-man front. They're going to have to play eight-man front. Miami is the best team I've seen so far this year, though. There's one great team in college football this year. This year, it's Miami for them. Coach, I'm not the football expert, but I like Ohio State because whenever nobody gives a team a chance to win the game they have a chance to win I the give game them a chance now i'm not okay. saying they don't have a chance but nobody's I'm picking they're going to have to play well nobody's come out and picked ohio state chris marlowe's picking ohio state for the upset there so it looks like fresno state is on its way anybody any other experts pick ohio state just i have not heard any, no just i have not heard anybody no. no low punt georgia tech Going to finish a good season. This is Jonathan Smith. He gets a block at the 30. And Smith brought down. What a year it has been for Georgia Tech in terms of the injuries, Coach. No matter how good a coach you are, if you don't have the athletes, and uh, this year was a disaster from the start when they started to lose running backs. Losing those running backs, no question, uh, really, really hurt their football team. Because Georgia Tech, with the, with the quarterback situation, with Suggs as being their quarterback, they're going to rely on the running game. And uh, today's ball game, I'm like, I'm a little surprised that we didn't see. Uh, Ace of Empathy? Yes. He, I thought maybe he should have carried the ball, although he fumbled early in the ball game. I want to thank my stat man, Doug Mann, our spotter today, Darren Meradian. And the rest of our ESPN crew, it's been a terrific effort here in San Jose, California. And the pass thrown out of bounds. Is Bilbo your man next year, or is it open competition between Suggs and Bilbo? I guess you I have would, to open it up. I would open it up. Yeah. Would, you know, you got spring practice. you got a long time between now and next year. you got, you know, obviously, and we didn't see the best of Suggs in today's ballgame. He's a better football player, I think, than what we saw out of him today. But I would definitely open it up and let the best man, uh, you know, start next season. So Georgia Tech will end the year at 7-6. and six. Fresno State has a lot of players coming back. All the skill position players will be back for Fresno State. 
And they will be ready for Tennessee. Bilbo throws incomplete. Fresno State defense today undermanned. But uh, they came up with the big plays when they needed it. They came up with the big plays at the right time. And the interception, the turnovers kill you in the ball game. Six turnovers, you've you, you got to be a lot better than the other team. You turn the ball over six times. Pat Hill is going to win his first bowl game at Fresno State. Lost three in a row, but this year, with the help of uh, some friends like D. Meza, the Bulldogs are 33 seconds from victory. Bilbo firing one, and it's intercepted. James Sanders, the Ronnie Lott wannabe, who has played outstanding football this year. He struts a bit. The seventh turnover for Georgia Tech. Six interceptions for an opportunistic Bulldog defense. Let's give Dan Brown, Dan, Dan Brown, and the uh, Fresno State defensive yep. staff the credit. They did a great job. The secondary coaches, Randy Stewart, Tom Mason, the linebacker coach, and Curry Lachlan, defensive line coach. Uh, Fresno State's defense, as far as I'm concerned, won this football. Game. So congratulations all around. Dan Brown, the decord. A one-time Boise State linebacker, 14 siblings, 10 of them brothers. So he grew up in a competitive atmosphere, and his dogs were barking today. Dogs were barking today. Outstanding game. Good game plan. Paul Pinniger, if you're wondering, had an okay day. He made some big plays, and that will do it. Clock running down, and the Fresno State Bulldogs get their first win since the 1992 Freedom Bowl when they dispatched of the USC Trojans. So let the celebration begin in the San Joaquin Valley. Fresno State wins the Silicon Valley Football Classic for the first time ever. Once again, our final score, the Fresno State Bulldogs outlast the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, 30 to 21. For Coach John Cooper and Tracy Wolfson, I'm Chris Marlowe. NFL tonight is coming up next. The Fresno State Bulldogs have won it. Let's go to the studio.